Those in attendance, copies of the agenda for today's meeting, the public hearing procedure, and planning department staff reports on all agenda items are available in the lobby. The Planning Commission's and the BZA's bylaws limit the applicant on a zoning, subdivision, or variance application and his or her representatives to a total of 10 minutes of speaking time at the start of the hearing on that item, plus up to two minutes at the conclusion of that hearing. All other persons wishing to speak on agenda items are limited to three minutes per person. However, if they feel that it is needed and justified, the chairman may extend these times by up to two minutes. All speakers are requested to state his or her name and address for the record when beginning to speak. When you are finished speaking, please share your name, address, and the case number on the sheet provided in the room. This will enable staff to notify you if there are any additional proceedings concerning that item. All speakers at the podium, please remove your face mask before speaking into the microphone. Please note that all written and visual materials you present to the Commission and the Board will be retained by the Secretary as part of the official record. If you are not speaking, but you wish to be notified about future proceedings on a particular case, please provide your contact information to the Planning Department. The Planning Commission and the Board are interested in hearing the views of all persons who wish to express themselves on all the agenda items. However, we ask that all speakers please be as courteous and concise as possible and avoid long repetitions of facts or opinions which have already been stated. For your information, the Wichita City Council has adopted a policy for all city zoning items. A copy of this policy is available from the planning staff. The City Council relies on a written record of the Planning Commission hearings and does not conduct its own additional public hearings on these items. The decision of the BZA is final. Any appeal of a decision of the BZA is to the District Court. Thank you, and now I'd ask for a roll call of commissioners present, please, and remind you to use your microphone so the persons participating online can hear. Fox? Present. Duell? Here. McKay? Here. Green? Here. Bill Johnson? Here. Blick? Josh Blick is absent. Nix? Hugh Nix is absent. Foster. Here. Warren. Here. Joe Johnson. Here. Miles. Cindy Miles. Cindy Miles is absent. Hartman. Here. Aldridge. Present. Williams Bay. Here. I show 11 members present. And three absent. I do have one additional announcement. Commissioner Duell, who serves as chairman of advanced plans, has asked to be released from his responsibility as a substitute on the uh, subdivision committee. So uh, Commissioner Foster would welcome uh, persons who might be willing to serve as alternates. The meetings are the Thursday prior to the M APC meeting in the morning at 9.30 for up to two hours and you just simply need to be on call in the event that you are needed for a quorum. So please visit with Commissioner Foster if you have interest. And this is a good point of education for those of you who might be with us for the first time, um, that all the items that we are hearing are heard by subdivision cases or by a committee. Uh, so when it seems we move through some items quickly, it's because we rely on the expertise of the subdivision members for much of the technical aspects of the cases. Um, today is focused on on that opportunity for public input. Did you have a comment, Commissioner Johnson? Okay. Anybody else? But and, do that virtually. and you can do it virtually, so that makes it a little easier. You're not having to physically be present. Um, Director. Yeah, just a quick clear to add okay. on to that, okay. that um, those are for the items that are subdivision items or the Correct. vacation items, but yes. not for the zoning. Not items. for the zoning cases. Zoning cases are separate. Okay. And it's a great learning opportunity for those of you who would like to delve into that more deeply. Thank you. Um, you have received the minutes of the May 25th, uh, 
meeting. Uh, are there any corrections, changes, or I would entertain a motion for approval? Move for approval. Motion from Commissioner Hartman. Second. Second by Commissioner Warren. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, persons who would abstain are Josh Blick, not present. Cindy Miles, not present. Ann Fox, cannot vote. And Deb Foster was absent. So abstaining, Ann and Deb. So we have uh, approval nine to zero to two. Thank you. Um, we will defer the approval of the previous meeting to the next meeting due to the length of the minutes. And with that, we are going to begin agenda review. Pardon me? Were you okay? Oh, wow, we have entertainment on the side. Um, the agenda review is a process of looking at all the cases on our docket today, identifying if we need to hear the case because of public comment or a uh, commissioner wanting to hear. So we'll begin by that, uh, looking at the subdivision cases. First item 2.1, subdivision 2023. Quadruple 08, located near 47th Street South and Greenwich Road. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Seeing none, does anyone in chambers want to speak on this case? Seeing none, does anyone participating virtually want to speak on this case? Hearing none, I don't have a visual on uh, remote participants. Is there somebody who can watch that? just that a camera's lighting up or something, maybe. Hearing none, we'll take 2.1 on consent. Item 2.2, .2, subdivision case 2023-0014, located near 37th Street North and 215th Street West in the county. Is there anyone on the commission who would like to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone in chambers who would like to speak on this case? Is there anyone participating virtually who would like to hear this case? Hearing none, 2.2 .2 on consent. Item 2.3, subdivision case 2023-0017, Buffalo Pines Edition at Pawnee and South 127th East. Anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone participating in chambers want to hear this case? and anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take 2.3 on consent. I'd accept a motion. We move that we approve items 2.1, 2.2, .2, .2, and 2.3. Motion from second. Commissioner second. Green, second from no. Commissioner Hartman. And all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Opposed, nay. Motion passes 11-0. Moving on to the public hearing items. Item 3.1, vacation item 2023, 0019, uh, located West 45th Street North and north of Hoover Road. Is there anyone on the commission that would like to hear this case? Anyone in chambers who would like to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually that would like to hear this case? Will be taken on consent. Item 3.2, vacation item 2023-0020. Uh, this is located at East 21st North between Market and Park Place. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? Hearing none, we'll take 3.2 on consent. Item 3.3, vacation item 2023, 0021. Um, vacations at northwest corner of Lulu and 49th Street. Exact address 4999 South Lulu Avenue. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We'll take that item on consent. 
And item 3.4, vacation item 2023, 0022, uh, located at East Central and East of Mosley, between 448 and 430 North Mosley Avenue. Anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chat to hear this case? Anyone participating remotely want to hear this case? I, I move for 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. I have a motion from Commissioner Joe Johnson. Second. Second from Commissioner Williams Bay. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion passes 11-0. Moving on to public hearing items, uh, item 4.1, conditional use 2023 0013. This is located at 1019 West Douglas Avenue. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating remotely want to hear this case? We will take 4.1 on consent. Item 4.2, staff is rec recommending denial, so we will automatically hear this case. I do want to check and see if the applicant is present. Will you please make yourself known? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and then uh, did anyone else in chambers want to hear this case just to have a sense of timing today? Okay, thank you. Anybody participating virtually, again, to get a sense of timing? We have a full agenda. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned. We will be back to hear that after agenda review. Item 4.3, um, Community Unit Plan 2023-0018, located north of Broadmoor and south of East 21st, 2023 North Broadmoor. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating remotely want to hear this case? Uh, this is Harlan Hill. I represent the owner, so I am available if there okay. are any questions. Thank you for speaking up, but we will take this item on consent. Item 4.4, Community Unit Plan 2023-00019. Uh, this is located uh, East Kellogg Drive near South Rock Road. Is anyone on the commission want to hear this case? 4.4. Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating remotely want to hear this case? Note Cindy Miles has uh, arrived, so we now have 12 commissioners present. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, we'll take item 4.4 on consent. Item 4.5 is a denial recommendation, so we will hear this case. Again, I would ask, is there anyone in chambers who would like to speak on this case? Raise your hand so we have a sense of the number of persons that would like to speak. This is the Uptown Neighborhood case located on East 1st Street and North Poplar, 158 North Poplar. Um, that would be my uh, is okay. Is the agent or applicant present for this case? Yes, that's me. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yes, I'd move for approval of uh, 4.1 and 4.3, so we have those out because um, Cindy came after those. Oh, okay, that's a great idea. Second. We have a motion from. Commissioner Joe Johnson, a second from Commissioner Warren to approve items 4.1 and 4.3. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes 11-0. And thank you again, Joe, for that. Uh, uh, but we made the motion early because uh, Commissioner Miles wasn't here for that uh, review. Case 4.5, 4. we will hear, and the applicant is present. Uh, item 4.6, zoning case 2023-00029, located at 225 North Young. Um, does anyone in the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? 
anyone participating remotely want to hear this case? Item 4.6 will be on consent. Item 4.7, zoning case 2023-0030. This is located west of Arkansas Avenue and north of West uh, 38th Street North, 3825 North Arkansas. Anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We will take 4.7. Seven on consent. 4.8, zoning case 2023-00031, located on the south side of East English and east of South Hillside at 200 South Hillside. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Okay, I show three or four hands in chambers. Is anyone participating virtually want to hear this case 200 South Hillside? We will hear that. And anyone virtual, just for indication of the number of persons who want to hear it. Okay, we'll, we'll hear 4.8. Agent or applicant present. 200 South Hillside, will you please make yourself known? While we continue, if uh, staff would check on their availability, please. Item 4.9, zoning case 2023-0033, located west side of North Lorraine and east of North Chautauqua. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Okay, we will hear this case. Is the agent or applicant available? Okay, thank you. Item 4.1, 4.10, zoning case 2023-0034, located at 741 North Clara. Is there anyone on the commission who would like to hear this case? Anyone in chambers who would like to hear this case? We have someone present and is the agent or applicant available? Okay. Thank you. We will hear 4.10. Item 4.11, zoning case 2023-0035 with conditional use 2023-0025. This is generally located on the west side of South Bear Street and north of West Estner. Does anyone on the commission want to hear this case? Anyone in chambers want to hear this case? Seeing none, anyone participating virtually want to hear this case? We'll take 4.11 on consent. Move that we approve items 4.4, 4.6, 4.7, and 4.11. Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Green, a second from Commissioner Bob Aldrich, and uh, any, let's all in favor please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Uh, motion passes 12-0. Uh, we get an answer on agent for our I believe that's for 4.8. Yes. And um, staff are contacting Working them on it. right okay. now. So. Thank you. Uh, we will call for uh, then staff presentation of item 4.2. And, uh, and Madam Chair, before the staff presentation, I just mm -hmm. want to make a quick comment on that one. Um, this is kind of a unique situation for me because uh, Caddy Corner to the south and west of this location is uh, St. Paul's Uni uh, United Methodist Church. My mother-in-law is the pastor there. So uh, I just want to make sure on the record uh, that you all know that staff developed the recommendation on this um, prior to uh, submitting it. It wasn't, I was not uh, the one who came up with the recommendation for this and I'm going to step out uh, while this item is heard, and I'll come back after this item is done. 
and that's why the change of the person presenting the item as well. So, Christina, please uh, proceed with the presentation of the case. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Christina Reith. I'm an associate planner uh, with the planning department. This is case number CON 2023 0024. The applicant is requesting a conditional use to allow vehicle and equipment sales outdoor on a property zoned LC limited commercial district. It's located at 404 East 13th Street North. It's currently developed with a clothing alteration store and a driving school, uh, both which intend to remain in operation. Uh, the driving school intend, or uh, the driving school and the proposed vehicle sales lot intend to share office space and parking. Um, I, the report talks about parking a little bit. I'm not going to go too much in depth. I'm just going to say that uh, staff recommends that the applicant for the vehicle sales lot either submit a parking study to be reviewed by the zoning administrator or an administrative adjustment to reduce the off-street parking requirement for the site. Vehicle and equipment sales are subject subject to supplementary use regulations of the Unified Zoning Code. Uh, they are listed in your staff report. Um, basically, uh, if we talk about location, it's contiguous to East 13th Street North, which is classified as an arterial street. Um, visual screening of adjacent areas adjacent to residential zoning districts. Uh, screening is not required along the north property line. However, there is a wood screening fence that is currently in place along the north property line. As for the rest of the uh, supplementary use regulations, the applicant shall comply with those regulations. Uh, if we take a look at the zoning map here, I'm going to skip forward. There we go. Perfect. Uh, within one block to the west on uh, Broadway Avenue at the intersection of East 13th Street and North Broadway, there are already two existing car lots. Uh, located on the northwest and southwest corners. Uh, if we look at the uh, properties to the east, north, and west, they're all zoned LC Limited Commercial District. Property to the east is developed with the historic Adeline apartment building and is used for multifamily housing. Property to the north is a single family dwelling. Uh, properties to the west are mostly vacant lots except for a retail ice cooler and dispenser. Uh, property to the southwest is, uh, is zoned TF3, two-family residential district, and developed with a church parking lot. And then property to the south is zoned TF3 and developed with a single-family dwelling within the Topeka Emporia Historic District. So even though we have commercial, it's closer to Broadway, and even though North Topeka and North Emporia are considered arterial streets, this is a very residential area. Um, this is part of the Topeka Emporia, uh, not this site itself, but just south of it. Um, is a Topeka Emporia Historic District. A little bit of case history. In 1958, the property was rezoned from residential to LC Limited Commercial. In 2016, uh, an, a conditional use was approved for vehicle and equipment sales, but was considered null and void for failure to satisfy the conditions of approval by providing an updated, six, uh, updated site plan within six months of approval. So in terms of conformance to plans and policies, there are a couple that we abide by. Uh, the requested conditional use is not in conformance with the community investments plan. If we take a look at the 2035 Wichita Future Growth Concept Map, which is here, uh, the map identifies the area in which the site is located to be appropriate for residential. The requested conditional use is not in conformance with the uh, general development pattern of the locational guidelines. These guidelines encourage major commercial and employment centers to be located at the intersections of arterial streets and along highways and commer uh, commercial corridors. As I mentioned earlier, North Topeka Avenue effectively functions as a residential collector, and East 13th Street is not necessarily a commercial corridor at this location. The requested conditional use is not in conformance with the general land use compatibility guidelines. These guidelines discourage higher intensity development from locating in areas with existing lower intensity development, particularly established low density residential areas. It's not in conformance with the Wichita Places for People plan. Um, strategy six within uh, the plan says that we should re uh, encourage infill and redevelopment that is contextual to the environment in which it's occurring. So if we talk about the vehicle and equipment sales and where they're located, it's on Broadway. This is off of Broadway. Um, it's also located within an area of opportunity. 
And then uh, it's not in conformance with the historic Midtown plan. The preferred land uses discourage auto-related uses and destination uses that do not serve the local population. Additionally, the plan identifies North Broadway Avenue to be the main commercial corridor where high intensity uses should be located. Based upon the information available at the time the staff report was prepared, staff recommends a conditional use be denied. And this is based on the golden rules that we abide by. So if we look at the zoning, character, and uses in the neighborhood, I mentioned that there's an apartment building used for multifamily housing, there's a single family dwelling. Uh, to the north and then to the south is another single family dwelling. And then within one block to the west at East 13th Street and North Broadway, there's two existing car lots. Uh, in 2019, the Wichita City Council followed the recommendations of the staff and the MAPC and denied the expansion of the car lot on the southwest corner of East 13th Street and North Broadway Avenue from expanding. Um, the suitability of the subject property for the uses for which it's been restricted. Uh, the reason they're requesting this conditional use is because it's within 300 feet of residential zoning. Uh, the extent to which removal of the restrictions will detrimentally affect nearby property. The removal of restrictions to permit a vehicle sales lot, it could set a precedent for future vehicle sales lots in the area outside of the North Broadway Avenue corridor. A vehicle sales lot could introduce light pollution and a negative Im uh, visual impact to the residential uses to the north, east, and south. If you look at number four, length of time subject properties remain vacant. Um, it was zoned commercial in 1958, and then the current structure was built in 1986. Approval of this application could have an impact on the welfare of the abutting and adjacent residential uses. Denial of this request could represent a loss in the use of the enjoyment of the applicant's property. As I mentioned earlier, the proposed application is not in conformance with any of the plans that we abide by. Uh, should the request be approved, it is not anticipated to have a significant negative impact on community facilities. And at the time the staff report was prepared, um, we have not received any comment from the neighborhood residents, and I believe that is still true. Should the MAPC determine that this application be approved, staff recommends that it shall be subject to the following conditions, and the commission should adopt a, a alternative findings to support the recommendation. One, the conditional use shall be limited to the sales of cars and light pickup trucks. No sale or rental of trailers, boats, motorcycle vehicles, um, RVs, or trucks larger than pitch, pickups are permitted. Because of the definition of vehicle repair limited in the Unified Zoning Code, um, none shall be conducted on site unless a building is provided for this activity. No outside storage of parts, including tires, oil containers, or any similar type of receptacles for new or used petroleum products. Three, all improvements to the property must be finished before car sales are permitted. Those improvements include clearly marked customer and employee parking and the display area, and the proposed lighting. The site will be developed according to the site plan. A conditional use amendment shall be required for any of these changes to these conditions. The applicant shall submit a parking study for review and approval by the zoning administrator. The site shall be developed and operated in compliance with all federal, state, and local rules and regulations. And if the zoning admi administrator finds that there is a violation of any of these conditions, the zoning administrator with the concurrence of the planning director may declare that the conditional use is null and void. So I'm going to skip to some of the site photos here. So this is a site plan that was submitted. This is looking northeast at the current site. And in the back here is the historic Adeline apartment building. This is looking north and, and property west of the site. This is looking west away from the site. This is looking north away from the site. So as you can tell, it's a very residential area um, outside of Broadway. This is looking south away from the site. This is the beginning of the Topeka Emporia Historic District. This is looking southwest away from the site. And those are all my site photos. And with that, I will stand for questions. Any commissioner questions for staff? Seeing none, I would call for the applicant. I have a okay, I'm sorry, Bob. Yeah, uh, is this property actually located in the uh, historic district? Or no, it's not located in the historic district. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? 
then I would call for the applicant or agent, please, to come to the podium. And you'll have 10 minutes to tell us about your project. Please start by saying your name and address. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Vyamung Seth, and I live on 2825 East Glen Oaks, Wichita, Kansas, 67216. I bought this uh, building about a few months ago, and my wife and I own a small business. We do uh, retail, um, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood grocery retail, and we do apparel retail, and also a driving school. Um, we bought this specific building because we wanted to uh, sell vehicles, and the owner mentioned that um, they did apply for conditional use, and it was approved. I do. I uh, blame myself for not really following up on that one uh, because when I was applying for the license, uh, Henry uh, told me that I would have to, I need to double check with the, with the planning committee because something some was wrong. So, and when I checked with the committee, they said that, um, well, that I have to redo this. With the driving, I'm an instructor and with the driving school and the reason why I'm we are pushing ourselves to see if we can sell vehicles. And I do teach a variety of people, uh, different colors, different races, different backgrounds. And mostly sometimes uh, refugees from Afghan, uh, Ukraine, and Africa. Um, these people uh, know mostly nothing about vehicles. And many times after I complete with them, they ask if I do sell vehicles. I'm like, I don't sell vehicles. Do, do you want to go with me to buy a vehicle when I do get a license? And I don't, I don't have much time to go with them to choose the right vehicle and the safe vehicles uh, for them. And you do know to become a safe driver over there, you, you should know your material and what you're driving. I actually just took uh, child passenger safety training to provide more safety uh, to my students. Uh, especially the parents with children uh, to fully uh, uh, and properly buckle up in the car seat and in the vehicle seats. So, but with this um, vehicle sale, uh, I it would give me more opportunity to present vehicles. I'm not just trying to get money from them, but I'm actually trying to make sure they are getting the right vehicle and for their for their suitable needs and what exactly what they need because. Most of these people never rode a, a car before, don't know anything about vehicles at all. So, and I think buying from a person who knows much about vehicles and the safety and the things like that would, would benefit more uh, for them. I'm not asking to be selling a lot of vehicles. If I could be approved with just a uh, few vehicles, I could sell vehicles personally, like buying like a second hand and things like that, but I'm a guy who wants to work uh, by the book, who wants to go uh, with the state laws and uh, federal laws. And that's why uh, after finding out that, of course, this was voted new, I was disappointed, but I, we encourage ourselves to reapply. And we think this is a doable sense. I, I do understand uh, opinion changes, but it was approved before uh, for uh, certain reasons. And I'm asking that it could approve it. Uh, to be approved so we so it can help us serve more better and uh, to our students and clients uh, to make sure they are getting the right vehicle uh, for their suitable needs uh, over there on the road and I, I again for the parking um, I did submit my plan for the parking uh, my wife does alteration in there but with alteration he she only does it by appointments so you will barely see a vehicle over there. And with the students, with the driving school, when we do have a class, parents drop their kids to the class and then uh, they leave. And when uh, at the end of the class, they come back and pick them up. So you will barely see uh, the vehicle over there. And with me being on the road uh, most of the time, uh, so the only car you're probably gonna see most of the time uh, would be my wife's uh, doing the alterations inside over there. Uh, and the person who comes for the service of the iteration really doesn't stay, doesn't stay there more than uh, 10 minutes because they've got to do the um, measurements and whatever they need to, to do, and they leave and they come back to pick up whatever uh, they dropped. So I'm willing to follow every instruction the committee uh, will ask me and everything that I need to do uh, to make sure I'm abiding 
by the law. And um, this would give us more opportunity really to uh, to save the city. And I'm more patient, I'm more, uh, I'm more, um, I'm motivated to support, to make sure we have safe drivers over there and we are actually operating safe vehicles on the road. Okay. Uh, and that is why I, I know most about vehicles since I was a little. Uh, I, I'm very passionate about vehicles. So I know my vehicles make and models and, and the features of the vehicles. So, and I'd be more than happy to share my knowledge to my clients uh, before they buy vehicles. Because we all know okay. when you go to buy vehicles, most of the people will just sell you uh, in, instead of telling you the cons and pros, but I'm Thank willing you. to provide Thank those. Thank you. There yeah. are many of us who appreciate someone willing to share their knowledge. That does bring you to the close of your time, okay. um, and you've given us a good idea of your concept. At this point, I'm going to ask if any of the commissioners have any questions for the applicant. Okay. Mr. Yeah. Commissioner Aldrich. Sir, um I know you've looked at the conditions in, in the event that the commission does approve, and I think you may have already stated, uh, do you agree and support all eight conditions that staff has recommended? Yes, I do. Thank you. Any other qu Commissioner Foster? I think this is probably more a question for staff, but does the conditional use convey with the property if we approve it does it go on if this owner sells it or does it is it just for this owner as long as this owner is there this conditional use runs with the land thank you so if it was approved prior why didn't that run with the land because it did not meet the conditions um, they were supposed to provide an updated site plan and they didn't do that Thank you. I'm sorry if I missed that. Um, any other questions for the applicant? If there are none, please stay close because next we will call for any public comment on this case. So if you'd like to speak on this case, please go to the podium. Uh, give us your name and address, please. That allows us to keep you connected to this case as it moves on. And you'll have three minutes. And do we have a staff member keeping time? OK. And we'll keep it here, too. So uh, if you give us a 30-second warning. Um, OK, you may proceed. My name is Ellen Reardon. I live at 1415 North Topeka. My house on the pictures was the big gray neoclassical. I bought that in very, very bad shape. There's actually four of us that have bought homes on that block and, and worked on them. I apologize, we misread the information. I thought we couldn't turn in our protest sheets till the 23rd. We have some, but I didn't think we could till tomorrow, so I'm sorry about that. The thing that I don't want, now that I'm retired, I go on my front porch and I drink coffee. So am I gonna watch somebody haggling over the cost of a car in my house? I mean, we are a residential street. Yes, when I bought the house in 2003, Brightline was there, minimal traffic. And no, we have no parking because they took our lanes away for bike paths. And the, st the street on Topeka next to the business has one parking spot because they had to make a left turn lane since they took one of our lanes. So there's minimal parking on Topeka and they can't park across the street, they'll get ran over because they took our light out. And 13th is very busy. I don't want, I don't want to think there'll be people loitering there, but there will be. There'll be people there to look at cars. And how do I know the nice man doesn't find a deal and buy 20 cars? How, I mean, it's a residential block, and I I just don't want the traffic, and I don't want to watch it. So I'm going to have to go to the backyard. OK, any other significant issue different from parking and the, the view and business outside your front yard that you'd need to add? Okay. No, I just, you know, we're just a residential area. Okay. And I know we're off Broadway. 
shouldn't have bought a house off Broadway, but I didn't think it would follow me. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission for this speaker? Okay, thank you. thank you. You can have your seat. And then next speaker on this topic. Is there another? A lot of people work following this. Yeah, okay. And would you say the parking is the most significant aspect as the conditions that were s recommended if this is approved was that the, all the parking would need to be accommodated? Um, is that the biggest issue for you, getting rid of some of the on-street parking? Oh, back to the mic, please, so people remote can hear you, please. I don't want a car lot across the street from me. Okay, all right. I hate Thank to be you. mean about that, but there okay. will be people coming and going. Right. There will okay. be people buying cars. Okay. Thank so. you. You've answered my question. Any, any other speakers in the room who would like to speak on this topic? Is there anyone participating virtually who would like to speak on this topic? Okay. Yes. Okay, please state your name and address, and um, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Claire Willenberg, 1402 North Garland. Uh, I've been a realtor for 30 years, and I have watched Midtown fight other parking lots along this corridor. Um, I'm sorry that they were unavailable today, those people, um, participants. For all of the reasons list, listed by staff of nonconformance, this use is not appropriate, not in conformance with the Midtown plan, places for people, and others. It encroaches into a residential neighborhood. It takes another bite and affects the quality of living for those residences along Topeka. It will negatively affect the neighborhood. Please deny. Thank you for comments. Any questions from the commissioners for this speaker? Thank you. Are there any other uh, persons virtual who would like to speak on this item? We will then call the applicant again to the podium and you have two minutes to respond to the concerns you've just heard. Do I have to say my name again? No. Okay. We now know who you are. <laughs> you mentioned about me selling uh, 20 or more vehicles. My plan, uh, you, my plan is not to, be, to, to sell a lot of vehicles. You might see even two, one, three, four vehicles over there. It's something that I, I just want to provide for my students after they get the license so they get uh, the right vehicles. And again, where I, I do have inside the garage where I can uh, keep him, and I do have another like five, according to the uh, plan that I provided, uh, five parking that are surrounded with the fence. So I'm actually planning, if this is approved, I'm actually planning to uh, change with the wood fence, to change it with the metal fence to make sure vehicles are safe in there. And uh, the other outside vehicle, the other outside parking are only for uh, customers who's gonna go in and out. But for those for those vehicles that I'll be selling, we'll be uh, locked in in the fence and use the other uh, four spaces that are inside the building uh, for, that, for that particular use. And, I, I'm, we're not planning, and no one is going to park us uh, on the street. Uh, we know that from uh, the regulation that, I, that, that, that they gave me that I've read. So our goal is to use the same parking that we have uh, within, the, within the site. So uh, I just think that it would not pose high risk uh, for that matter if this is going to be approved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Your time is complete as well. So we will bring this back to the commission. Um, may, may I interject? Yes. Thank you. I heard something about metal. If metal is intended to be used for screening material, it, it cannot be used for screening material. It has to be wood or masonry or something other than metal. Okay, thank, thank you for thank that you. clarification. Commissioner, Commissioner McKay. In the presentation, we talked about this being a neighborhood uh, residential neighborhood. I'm sitting here looking at the zoning map. And if you compare the yellow, which is the single family, to all the other different zonings in here, it's probably a wash. 
as far as number, the red is all commercial. And if you take 13th Street off of the map and go clear over to the highway, except for at McAdams Park, on the north side of 13th, it's all commercial. And a lot of it is on the south side. Uh, I'd be very careful. I'm not saying I'm against it or for it. I'm just saying we need to be very careful of using that as a reason to turn this down if we turn it down. Other discussion at this point, Commissioner Bill Johnson. Temporary moment of rest for, for microphone. Staff. This was approved prior, but it was not finished because of a site plan finished. I guess I'm curious how it changed from being approved in to now we're wanting to deny it. I, I'd like a little more information. Christina, do you want to speak to that at this point? I don't have that information at this time, but I can look into it and get back to you. I didn't have a chance to read the full report from 2000, um, from a few years ago. Thank you. Commissioner Duell. This uh, property has been used for commercial purposes for a good number of years, isn't that correct? Yes, that's correct. It's currently developed with commercial uses. Commissioner Warren. I have a question for the applicant. If he could come back up to the podium, please. Sort of one of the big concerns seems to be how large that this enterprise could grow. And based on your, your model, if we were to limit the number of automobiles that you could sell to five as a maximum that you would ever have on the location at any time, could you live with that limitation? Absolutely. Thank you. Would you, I have a question for you as well, would you consider most of the business transactions would happen inside the building that's there, that you would be having those conversations inside? The only conversation I would have outside would to make sure they understand the features of the vehicle, but the finalization, of course, would happen right inside. And is your intent that you'd be teaching your customers inside that building? Or would there be a lot of activity outside around the cars while you're teaching them about no, vehicles? Mo most of the teachings happen inside and not outside. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Other questions or discussion, Commissioner Foster? I thought when I first read this report that this was not an appropriate use, but the more I hear, the more I think, in fact, it is, especially since the vehicle sales part be within a fenced-in yard. Um, with the constraint that was discussed about limiting the number of cars to five, I'm more concerned about future owners of this property making it into a giant car lot, but for this specific use, and if limited to five vehicles for sale, I think it may be an appropriate use for this neighborhood and this property. Commissioner Williams Bay. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. So if we limit it to five for this applicant, that goes with the land or not? That does remain with the land. Yes. That's correct. Yes. Yes. I uh, assume they would always be able to come back and request more if it was another buyer. But, but, that, but that would be an entirely different uh, case that we would have to listen. But for this, it would be five. You are correct. Thank you, JR. Other comment discussion, Commissioner? Is, if there's no more discussion, I'll make a motion. I would like to move that we approve with the additional condition that the number of cars for sale on this parcel be limited to five vehicles. And what are your findings uh, according to the um, elements of decision? Hey, usually you're the one asking that, Commissioner Foster, so back should adopt additional findings. All right. I think zoning uses and character of the neighborhood, I think in this particular case, the neighborhood is mixed um, and that there is con commercial development and this particular parcel has been commercial. The subject property, I think, the, I think the main difference 
is the plans, and that perhaps is an interpretation of the plans, but I think, again, if we look at this as mixed use as opposed to strictly residential, I think it can be interpreted as being um, in compliance with some of the plans that we're discussing. Any other findings uh, for those of you who had comments? It's history of operating as a commercial use and that that was approved for this property prior. It was the act of the owner not following the conditions that caused it to be brought into question, it appears. Did you get a second on that? I'll second the motion, but with one caveat. I'd like to have a better plot plan because it was turned down last time because the plot plan wasn't done. Then this drawing that we got here, whether it be done professionally, probably as much as anything. Because I, you know, I've been around this business for a little while and I have a tough time reading this. So if you'd like to add yeah. that to it, I'll second the motion. I would uh, agree with that adjustment to okay, the motion. So the motion is to approve the Approve with two additional conditions. One, that a scaled plot plan be provided, and if they're going to have, well, a scaled plot plan be provided and that the number of vehicles for sale be limited to five. Is this in addition to the eight that have already been spelled out here in the report? Yes. I, yes, that would be in addition to the eight conditions offered by staff if, sub, if we recommended approval. You want to quickly review those again? I think you're, I think you're saying five total, was you not? Five for sale total, so there would still be customer parking or client parking out in the front, but five total for sale. That's why you need to have a drawing so it'd be specific where you know where it's at. So have, the staff would have something to come back on to look at. It says it's they right. need an approved site plan, so I'm thinking that's already it, in it there. It did say, and this site plan is not approved. Okay, um, so we have a motion from Commissioner Foster, a second from Commissioner McKay to approve the applicant's request with conditions as stated and added. And um, I will call for a vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes 11-0, 12-0. Moving on to item 4.5, this is 4.4 uh, was approved by consent. 4.5, uh, Christina Reith is the staff person. All right, Christina Reith again with the planning or with the planning staff. This is case number PUD 2023 quadruple zero six. The applicant Theron is here today. Um, this is to create the 158 North Poplar planned unit development at uh, 158 North Poplar Avenue. It is 0.11 acres in size, so it measures 37 and a half feet by 130 feet, and it is currently undeveloped. Um, the applicant would like to develop a custom residential dwelling and a planned unit development allows that certain level of flexibility with site develop regulations, which would otherwise not be permitted under the current TF3 two family district zoning. The applicant is actually proposing height and setback standards that are more restrictive than what is permitted in TF3 zoning. It's listed in your table that is in your report. The applicant is requesting the zone change to permit one single family dwelling and attached garage on site that is made with refurbished shipping containers on a permanent foundation. The Unified Zoning Code does not permit shipping containers as building materials because the code defines them as outdoor storage, which is not a permitted use in residential zoning classifications. Because of the small size of the lot and it being used for a residential use, Staff is in agreement to not require the screening and landscaping requirements set forth in the Unified Zoning Code and the Wichita Landscape Ordinance, respectively. So if you look at the site plan, it didn't specify any uh, screening or landscaping. Uh, so a big reason that we're recommending denial for this is uh, because of the character of the neighborhood. 
the neighborhood is developed with um, various architectural styles with mixed architectural integrity. Uh, they're developed with bungalows, colonial revival homes, and American four-square single-family dwellings built in the 1910s with brick veneers and wood clabbered siding and fish scale sing shingles. And I could go on and on about all the cool architectural terms that are in that neighborhood. Uh, residential uh, residences made with shipping containers are thus not an appropriate building material and is not in character with the uh, existing neighborhood. There are no zoning cases associated with this property. The requested zone change is in conformance with the community investments plan. If you look at the 2035 Wichita Future Growth Concept Map, it identifies the area as residential and the, the applicant is proposing a single family dwelling on site. Um, the, one of the requested zone changes, um, or the, the requested zone change, sorry, is in conformance with the community investment plan's locational guidelines. One of the priorities in the established central area is to encourage infill development that maximizes public investment in existing and planned infrastructure and services. The subject site is bringing housing to a vacant lot where municipal services such as sewer and water are already in place. And the applicant proposes to build housing on a small lot. The requested zoning partially aligns with the goals of the Wichita Places for People plan. Um, more specifically, it does not conform to strategy six, encourage refill and, or infill and redevelopment that is contextual to the environment in which it is occurring. The neighborhood is developed mostly with older homes that have brick or wood clabbered siding or newer homes that are architecturally compatible with the older homes. Shipping containers as a primary building material is not architecturally compatible with the neighborhood. If we look at the central, air, central Northeast Area Update Plan, it is in conformance with those goals. Um, one of the priorities listed in the uh, plan is to promote new home construction on vacant lots. Based on the information available at the time of the public hearing, staff recommends denial of this application. The recommendation is based on the golden rules. Um, so if we look at the zoning uses and character of the neighborhood, Residences made with shipping containers are not an appropriate building material and is not in character with the existing neighborhood. Uh, the suitability of the subject property to the, for the uses to which it had been restricted. So if we look at the provisions of the Unified Zoning Code, they do not allow shipping containers as a primary use of residential building materials. The use of the shipping containers as a building material for a residence could have a negative visual impact on the surrounding properties. Uh, length of time, subject property has remained vacant as zoned. So a single family dwelling stood on the property uh, since the 1930s and was demolished around 2008. Approval of this application will bring housing to an undeveloped site. Denial of this application may result in the loss of enjoyment of the property for the applicant. The requested zone change is in partial conformance with the community investments plan, the places for people plan, and the central northeast area update. The proposed PUD should have negative minim or should have minimal M impacts on community facilities. And um, at the time the staff report was prepared, um, we received one phone call and two emails from citizens who expressed concern over the shipping container material. The number of comments has since multiplied, and I sent those over to the commissioners. And then um, there's additional comments that were provided in your packet on your desks. Should the MAPC find that the conditional use be approved? It is recommended that the MAPC adopt alternative findings supporting the recommendation. Staff recommends the following conditions. The applicant shall submit building elevations to the planning department for review and approval with an appeal to the Wichita City Council prior to the issuance of building permits. The residential structure shall be clad with traditional building materials with a hip or gabled roof similar to those found on nearby residences. The text of the PUD shall be revised in accordance with the recommended text as approved by the Planning Commission and City Council. The applicant shall record a PUD certificate with a register of deeds, a copy of the recorded certificate along with four copies of the approved PUD shall, see, shall be submitted to MAPD within 60 days of governing body approval or otherwise the request shall be con considered denied and closed and then all federal, state, and local laws and ordinances must be observed. Let's take a look at the site photos here. So this is what the applicant is proposing for his PUD. This is looking east towards the site. As you can tell, it's a very small lot. It's, I could take it within the entire picture. 
This is looking south towards the site. As we see here, there is a traditional craftsman bungalow with clapboard siding. This is looking north away from the site. We have um, a shingle siding and we have brick veneer bungalow. This is looking west away from the site. Uh, this house was recently demolished and we see a non-traditional or a newer duplex in the background. And with that, I will stand for questions. Questions for staff, Commissioner Duell. So if shipping containers are not approved materials uh, for residences, why are we hearing this case? Uh, because we believe it does not conform to the, zone, uh, to the uses and character of the neighborhood. That is the primary reason. Clarification, uh, Director Waddle. Sure. I think to add on to that answer, the applicant is requesting a custom zoning at the site so that they can use the shipping containers for the residential development. Because it's, it's physically possible, it's just that it's not typically allowed by the zoning code. And as I understand, if approved, although the recommendation is denial, if approved, there would be a requirement for typical cladding, much as is used on a lot of churches that are metal buildings that have stone or brick veneer or... Sure. Okay. Thank you. Other questions for staff at this time? Commissioner Williams Bay? It would also be required to have either a hip or gable roof, so it would be more like a, dish, a traditional home than a shipping container. That's correct. Okay. Um, and I do want to, Commissioner um, Would this have to have windows? Is that a requirement for a residential residence? It won't necessarily be a zoning requirement, but uh, the IRC, I'm sure there'll have to be windows, yes. And that's a clarification. This board's purpose is to determine if the change is appropriate. The appearance can't be approved by this body. Is that accurate? Or can you clarify what we can approve and what would go on to others? So zoning typically deals with land use. It can also deal with appearance in terms of context. And so the recommendation that you're seeing is you've got one recommendation for denial. That's our primary recommendation. You have a secondary recommendation um, or a fault, uh, an alternative recommendation that's provided in the staff report, which would allow you to approve, but we are recommending conditions so that it is more visually, um, it fits in more visually with the context, with the certain type of roof, with cladding on the exterior. You also all have the opportunity, if you wish, that you could approve it without any of those um, aesthetic treatments so that it could be more, it would be more similar to say something like the, um, the development that's on East Central that used shipping containers for commercial purposes. So now all of this is to state from the zoning perspective, there's an entire you know, building codes that would take place during their permitting process downstairs. Thank you for clarifying the scope of our uh, opinion. Uh, you had a question, Commissioner Miles? Scott, have we approved other shipping container homes in other areas here in Wichita? Yes, and so that you have, and I'd like to provide a little bit of context to this one as well. Um, so there was more recently, I think within the last couple months, maybe three months, there was a shipping container residential development in Midtown that one was directly across the street from an industrial uh, area. You may be familiar with the Juarez Bakery uh, along Waco. It's uh, just a couple blocks to the, a few blocks east of there. Um, likewise, uh, there have been residential, uh, there are residential developments with shipping containers. There's one, I believe, that's just north of Kellogg um, along Patty uh, is where one is located. Um, in addition to the Revolutia commercial development that's taken place on East Central. Now, um, when we looked at this one, some of the things that were a little bit unique is uh, the location in terms of where it is relative to the neighborhood, that this one is more in depth to the neighborhood. It, it was our sentiment as opposed to the one that's in the Midtown area where it was adjacent to an industrial use and it was a, a change of a former parking lot for uh, a residential use, but again, an industrial kind of context. Um, the one down south along Patty, I believe they had the zoning, they had GC zoning 
And so there were discussions. I think did they end up doing cladding on that one or no? Yeah, the, the property on Patty was owned GC, which allows, as you know, both commercial uses and residential uses. Outdoor storage is a commercial use, heavy commercial use, so it was both uses permissible, so they combined them. Other questions? Um, this lot is extremely narrow, and we need residential housing in our community. Um, it is possible to meet the codes and build a typical residential structure in this space. Correct. Is that correct. generally so, correct? Yes. So what's triggering the PUD is the shipping container material. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But the, it wouldn't be prohibited to build a, a more normal type structure in yes. that space. Okay. So it's Thank currently you. suitable for a single yes. family dwelling or a duplex. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Um, thank you for your report, and we would next uh, call the applicant or agent to tell us about their project. Hello. Hello. If you please make sure to use the microphone so virtual participants can hear, and please state your name and address. So, I would like to note, I guess... Your name and address, please, to oh. start with for the record, and then you'll have three minutes, which I think has already begun. Oh, ten minutes. I'm three sorry. Minutes. Ten okay. minutes. So, my name is Theron Frame. Um, I just own the lot. I live at 2212 Bella Vista. Um, so, they were talking about nonconformance, I guess, visually, um, I think is the big one, uh, as far as I know. And there is a... I have on the computer here, there is a, another house that doesn't have, I mean, like a couple houses down from where that one's at, and it doesn't have the hipped or gabled roof. It has a low slope roof. It doesn't have the brick veneer or wood clad siding that they're recommending. It has stucco. And so I just think that's kind of interesting at least. And I have been down there. Um, kind of campaigning, if you will, I guess, talking with all the neighbors. And I have, I don't know if you guys have the um, kind of spreadsheet with the names and addresses. Yes, that. Um, and then there's also, uh, I also took it to Facebook, I guess. And there's a bunch of just kind of over, just mainly positive um, things is all that I've seen on this. Um, the reason that I want to use the shipping containers is because I want to do a lot of the work myself um, to try and keep costs down. Because so after getting the surveying done and digging the footings, pouring the concrete foundation, then I think it's a matter of getting the shipping containers there, getting them in place and welded up, and then I can get in there and do framing and everything that doesn't need licensing to um, like electrical and I don't know if they need plumbing permits and stuff to have to be done by licensed plumbers. So, I mean, I can get in there and do as much as I can and cut out the GC or the general contractor and cut out their fees and kind of just, I'm just trying to get my own thing down there. Um, I like the location. Um, I have a bunch of notes. I don't know if you guys have a copy of this, the staff report that I was sent back with my notes in it. I have... If we don't, please proceed in sharing them, and uh, remember there is a time limit. You said you don't have them? Not your comments added to. Did we receive his comments? Out? That's the purpose of this time, okay. is for you to share that information with us. Okay. Um, and I say and you have seven minutes left. Tom George's, I believe that's his name. The PUD that um, was approved off of Wellington and Twelfth, I believe 
I mean, I know you guys say it's adjacent to commercial, but it's also adjacent to residential that is very similar to what is surrounding mine. Um, visually, I don't think the container design that I have planned is that um, too extravagant, I guess, it would take away from the neighborhood. I don't know if you have the pictures of the surrounding areas that I sent to her last yesterday, um, but I just kind of went down there and took pictures to try and give you guys a better feel for the neighborhood because some of the houses, I mean, I would say are lesser maintained than I think that they could be. Um, some of them are abandoned. Some of them are nice. It's just kind of a mix. And then the, like the subject property or the property at 129 Poplar um, doesn't have the hipped or gabled roofs, like I said, and doesn't have the brick or stucco siding, or it has stucco siding. Um, also note, Revolution is only 0.6 miles away from this, and those are the other shipping containers that I know of around the area. Um, the apartment PUD that got approved was 2.8 miles away from Revolution. Um, um, yeah, I guess the appearance is negotiable. Um, but I would really like to try and stick to my design just because personally I like that design and it fits within the TF3 setbacks that are currently there. So it would be even smaller than those, but just a few feet on each side, I think. Um, I don't know, I have some stuff down here about affordable housing. So the average home price in Wichita is about $215,000. Um, the current average wage in the US is around $28 an hour. So assuming 5% down payment plus 3% closing costs, that's $17,000 to buy the house. Monthly payments, including average for taxes, insurance, and PMI would be $18.21. Assuming 30% of your net income a month for housing, that comes out 30% of the average wage a month is $14.56. Your housing payment is at $18.21, so that's negative $365 every month for the average house on the average income here in the U.S., I guess, in Wichita, um, or $4,380 every year. Um, the cost is a huge factor for me going into this project. Part of the reason I'm wanting the container route is the modularity of it. I think they're easy dimensions and should be easy to get what I want inside of it. Um, Another big factor is I love the current design that I have. Um, I think it's very clean, subtle, has a somewhat modern look and feel to it. And they mentioned the different kinds of architecture that are in the neighborhood. And she said she could go on and on about the cool stuff about them. And I think this would just be another subtle, unique addition to the neighborhood. Um, it has a somewhat modern look to it and feel without being too over the top. A nice, clean, quiet, reasonably affordable, well-engineered and planned and thought out and well-maintained, customized personal residence is all that I'm after with this project. I hope you can see that vision. I hope you can see the vision I have. And um, I like the lot. I saw it come up maybe a month ago, um, a month and a half ago maybe. Um, I like that it was centrally located off, uh, centrally located in Wichita, just off of Kellogg and I-35, and there's Grove. I mean, it's Grove's a street away, and that's kind of a main street. So it's kind of like all the residentials on the east side, the east, north, east, north, and south. So there's really no, I mean, there's that big street that splits the two for the residential on the other side, on the west. Um... So, I mean, I also have, can I 
come around with the computer to show you guys some picture or a picture? Um, generally, quick. we don't allow that again because we're looking at the appropriateness of the PUD. Okay. And um, so, Director Wadel. So, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. If, if you'd like to, what we would have to do is take a picture of what you're showing them on the screen, so we have that for the record. Okay. Never mind. Um, and that would be part of the remaining minute and a half. If okay. no, okay. Well, so then you need to get that started so that we can include that in the time you have. Is um, there any? Uh, you've mentioned a number of reasons. Is there anything you haven't yet mentioned that uh, is a part of your plan or your? Uh, so I just kind of wanted to show the picture. It would be a barn dominium type. We just need to get it started, then make sure we can get a copy of it. If you, we can pass it around as part of your last minute of time. Okay. Well, so you want to? The gist of it is, is that the barn dominiums that they build, I don't know if there's any special zoning that needs to happen for those, but I'm pretty sure those are stick or metal framed and then covered with corrugated sheet metal siding. Um, so if I could build that in this exact layout that I'm after, I don't see why there's the fuss about um, the containers, if they've been approved elsewhere, kind of. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's what I want. seconds, and if you want okay. Sorry. It's what I want, um, and this is, I think, for me personally, the best way to go about it. Um, so, I mean, I just want something nice and quiet and small, centrally located, and that doesn't break the bank and keep okay. me working for the next 30 years. So. Thank you. And that's that your Questions for the speaker? Commissioner Warren. Sir, there's, there's a part of me that wants, that wants to encourage you because I think that, that using, reusing materials is a, is a, is a good thing. Uh -huh. uh, a, f a frame house is two by fours. It's covered covered with plywood as a box. Not very attractive until it gets covered up with brick or stucco or siding or something along that along that matter. Mm -hmm. What you've presented to us though is a box, and it, it, is, it really does not fit the neighborhood uh, at all. If you could if you could take your box like a frame house and put a gable roof on it, put some some traditional siding so that it fits in with the neighborhood, but you're you're asking us to approve a totally different concept of what is what is there in the neighborhood. My so, question to you is, if we were to approve this, would you be willing to put on an outer cover to this thing that's more traditional looking, um, or are you pretty well set on this box that you've got set that got before us? I'm not totally set on it. Um, I would like the low slope roof. And I know they only mentioned hipped or gabled, but there is a house, um, maybe like four houses from this lot that is nor hipped or gabled roof and nor brick veneer siding or wood clapboard siding. Or we've got a, we've got a picture with your materials that you get sent to us on that. It's, it's got quite a, quite a lot, more, a lot more slope than what you're showing in your drawing. Uh, which one? Can I come over and look real quick? It should be in the staff report that you have. Yeah. Do we have other questions for the speaker? Or, okay, other questions for the speaker? Have so, you actually priced the subcontractors for work on containers? I have not okay. because, I mean, this seemed like the first step and then you know, getting quotes and everything after that and just calling people in to get the work done. Just from my experience in the industry, contain the subcontractors have a much more difficult time working with containers uh, for electrical, plumbing, and uh, insulation. So the costs are really a, quite a bit higher for those trades, and they are required because of licensure. And it, that's only my experience. I'm just bringing that forward to make sure you're aware. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments for the speaker at this point? Yes. Commissioner McKay. Yeah. Um, and uh, then are you aware of the requirements for a uh, general contractor by owner? And have you looked into, you, do you have any other experience with construction of any type? Uh, I do not. Um, this would be my first project. Um, but I think that 
it shouldn't be too big of a deal once everything's in place because then it's a matter of getting people, getting licensed people out to do the work um, that needs to be done by licensed people. Um, okay, that again, that uh, it might be something you want to explore a little more to understand when you're serving as general contractor, the obstacles and the differences in the construction process that you'll face. Um, hate to get you, a, even if we did approve and you have a, or if we do, mm -hmm. um, that your experience is a factor in the process. So I think, yeah, I mean, maybe I'm severely under I think you've answered our question that this would be your first project that you ha haven't looked at the requirements for a uh, contractor by owner. I've spoken with Stephanie Stillwell, is that who she is, down okay. in the first floor. Okay. Um, and she just, I mean, there was, she gave me a residential building permit that just fills out. I mean, okay. I think you find people who are going to do license plumbing and electrical and stuff, but I mean, that would be further down in the road okay. is kind of. Um, and that's a fair answer. You answered my question. Um, any other questions for the applicant at this time? Then if you'd um, stand aside but say present, and we will now call for a uh, public comment on the case. So thank you. Um, who would like to speak on this item? Okay, please come forward to the podium, uh, state your name and address, and you'll have three minutes, please. Good afternoon, my name is Andrew Hill. I live at 158 North Volusia, and I'm recommending denial of this because as the commission knows, uh, it, based on the plans presented, this will not match the context or the style of the neighborhood. I do know, like uh, as he said, some homes are better well, or more well kept than others, uh, but overall, uh, even though there is the shipping container up there on Central, that's not part of our neighborhood, not part of the uptown area, as you're well, well aware. The uh, shipping container simply just doesn't fit what it uh, what uh, we love about our neighborhood, um, and that's I, mean, I think it's pretty much a pretty clear cut case that um, uh, you know we like the gabled roofs, we like the clad siding. It's and uh, given what the presenter showed today, um, seems to be have not done much research on you know what it takes to put a home there. And as uh, Christina mentioned, you can put a traditional residence there. It does not need to, the, the fact that it being a shipping container is not necessary for the lot. The lot's perfectly fit, perfectly big enough for a standard residential home. So just given the fact that it doesn't match the, uh, the appearance and the wonderful bungalows and older uh, looking homes in the neighborhood, uh, I think it's pretty cut and dry. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you. Uh, next speaker on this topic, please. Please proceed forward. And actually, if somebody wants to stand on deck, who wants to speak next, it's fine. Proceed forward. R.J. Gump. I live at uh, 230 North Volusia. I've lived uh, in the area for about 40 years. I have. It's gone through two periods. The first 20 years, the whole area went down. It was horrifying, there were gangs, there were crack houses, everything. The last 20 years, it has only gone up. Things have been improving, people have been buying, improving their houses, not tearing down and putting in new houses, improving their houses. The values have increased dramatically over the last five years, and the entire feel and uh, atmosphere of the neighborhood has improved dramatically. We have great commercial development on Central, where Revolution is, and on Douglas, well planned, well done, that's left great walking experiences for people who live in the neighborhood, and lots of people walk in this neighborhood. If you allow shipping container of construction to start here, it will, there will be more requests and there will be, and it will continue to, to uh, increase. It will not contribute to the feel and the type of housing in the neighborhood. I think it would be a horrible mistake. And I don't, I think you can tell by his lack of plans that we have no idea what to expect 
from his particular development. I'm empathetic with him as far as trying to do something, but I don't think there's any plan here. I think it's to use uh, shipping containers. <laughs> and they look like railroad cars, and nobody wants to live beside a railroad car. It does not improve the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you. Next speaker, please. I'm Paul Oberg, 339 North Chautauqua. I'm also the president of the Uptown Neighborhood Association. Revolution was mentioned by Mr. Wadle uh, as being an area that has used shipping containers. That is along Central. Uh, First Street and Second Street have been treated uh, by local traffic as an arterial, even though they're not designated as such. It has been a, a complex adjustment we've had to make with bicycle paths and the amount of traffic on those two roads. It is nothing like Central. Central, which has some light commercial and retail uh, zoning, is quite different from the middle of our Uptown Neighborhood Association, which is not zoned. It is residential and uh, should remain that way. And I agree with uh, the former speaker's assessment of long range effects that might occur from something like this. We need some long range planning before a house of this radical nature is produced in the Uptown Neighborhood Association. Thank you, any questions for the speaker? Uh, next speaker, please. And I think that may have been all that were in chambers. Is there anyone participating virtually who wants to speak on this item? Can you see? Yeah, uh, you might need to unmute, please, so that we can hear you. Hi, can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Thank you. Your name and address for the record, please, and you have three minutes. It's, my name is Timothy Johnson. I uh, have a house at 2412 East First Street North, and I was drawn to the neighborhood by uh, its old uh, nature. I've been working to retain that uh, uh, with improvements to the to the. Uh, property that I purchased, I think a shipping container would be totally at odds with the character of the neighborhood. And uh, uh, we've seen more and more people redoing and re, uh, invigorating the houses that are there in a similar style. And I think the neighborhood needs to keep that character. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, is there anyone else participating virtually who would like to comment? Can we see any activity? Okay, thank you. Um, at, at this point, uh, applicant, you can come back to the podium and respond to the concerns that have been expressed here. And you have two minutes. So I think the planning, the further out planning is something that I would look more into as soon as assuming this gets approved because this is kind of a step along the way. Um, uh, appearance wise, um, there is the house on 129 Poplar that is nor hipped or gabled roof, um, stucco siding. So, I mean, that's kind of contradicting with, um, the hipped and gabled roof and brick veneer or wood clad siding that's recommended. Um, the shipping containers again are just, so I guess once they get in there and do everything and like the concrete footings and crane them into place, um, then yeah, I don't, I mean, I can't frame a house by myself is kind of what I'm getting at, but I can get into the container and do some framing and get a grinding wheel and cut out some stuff that needs to be cut out and then get all the, everything framed in, sprayed insulation, and then have electricians and plumbers out as needed. Um, to do all the stuff that needs to be done by licensed people. And aesthetically, I'm not against um, the whatever need, might need to be recommended to this, but I would like to keep the low slope roof just because going to a hipped or gabled roof, you're gonna have the airspace above it. And airspace is not good for condensation. And that would just be more um, insulation that would need to be, I think. Um, 
This is seconds. Can any other information you want to supply at this time to respond to the concerns? So this is my this is the first step, basically, is approval here because I'm not gonna go and do all these things and pay a bunch of money to get all these things done without having a yes from you guys first. Okay. Um, your time is up. Thank you for your comments. And now I will bring this back to the commission for discussion. And I would note we also received, I believe I counted nine unique concerns that were also presented uh, to us in writing prior to today's meeting from neighbors in that this specific neighborhood. I'm sorry, your time's up at this point. Okay, Commissioner Aldrich. Uh, I'd like to make a motion based on staff recommendations, comments, all the comments and recommendations for denial. Second. I have a motion to deny and I have a second from, commis from Commissioner Aldrich, a second from Commissioner Miles. Any further discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any nays? A uh, motion passes 12-0. I would just like to comment for the applicant that your desire to build a home for yourself that's affordable is really admirable. I'd encourage you to go to Habitat for Humanity and see how they can help you build a stick structure, and that might be something you could consider with their support in an affordable manner. Amen? If I, if I may, mm -hmm. Madam Chair, just one for a staff question. Uh, Mr. Johnson, Joe Johnson, how did you vote on this item? We can't hear you, Joe. It was a late yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank so the motion passes 12-0. Thank you. All right. Um, the next case. Next case, 4.8, um, so in case 2023-00031, have we identified if the agent is with us at this point? Not sure. We believe that the agent has joined us online. Um, if Can we confirm? Agent, can you please speak up so we can confirm that you're with us for this presentation? I believe their name is Subhan. Have, have Mr. They Hairi, Mr. Navid Hairi is the agent. There, uh, there seemed to have been some back and forth with uh, uh, the applicant in terms of who is going to be representing them for this case. Um, the name that I was provided was Subhan. Um, let me check with the folks in the control room to see the listing of the folks who are online real quick. Could we change order and move to the next case at this point so we keep moving forward, please? Thank you, Mamito. We're going to send you back to your seat for the moment. Uh, let's move to case 4.9. The agent is present. This is zoning case 0033. And the presenting planner, Christina Reith, if you could come forward, please, to present the staff report. This is uh, zoning case number zone 2023-00033. The applicant is requesting a zone change from TF3 to Family Residential District to GO General Office District. The properties, uh, there are 14 in total, and they total uh, 1.66 acres in size and are generally no located north of East Central Avenue and uh, south of Elm Street, where my mouse is, and then on the west side of Lorraine, and on the east side of North Chautauqua Avenue. The applicant is requesting the zone change in order to construct a medical office. And staff is recommending a protective overlay to help mitigate possible negative impacts to the residential properties to the north and west. To mitigate light pollution from vehicular traffic on the adjacent residential streets, staff recommends in the protective overlay that the screening along the west and north property lines is sufficient to block the trespass of headlights. 
The requested zone change to GO General Office District would have a reduction in setbacks and an increase in permitted building height, and that's seen in your table, which is listed in the report. The property will need to adhere to the rules and regulations of the Wichita Sign Code, which prohibits building signs from facing residential zoning districts if the building is within 150 feet of the residential lot line. The applicant will also need to adhere to the requirements of the Wichita Landscape Ordinance. The uh, Unified Zoning Code Section 4-C5A Compatibility Height Standard states that no structure shall exceed 35 feet in height within 50 feet of the lot line of property zone TF3 or more restrictive. The proposed GO General Office Zone site abuts and is adjacent to TF3 zoned properties. Thus, the maximum height of 35 feet will be the same as abutting and adjacent TF3 zoned residences on the north and west sides of the property. The, mil the minimum building compatibility setback shall be 15 feet plus one foot for each five feet of lot width over 50 feet. The character of the neighborhood is residential with major commu commercial uses at the arterial streets. The requested zone change is in conformance with the community investments plan, the, the Wichita future growth concept map here. Uh, recommends a subject site is primarily appropriate for both resident or for residential and employment mix. And that states that due to the proximity of residential uses, employment uses likely will have limited negative impacts associated with noise, hazardous emissions, visual blight, and odor. The protective overlay, which includes screening and landscape requirements, should mitigate the negative impacts associated with the proposed commercial development. When we look at the locational guidelines of the community investments plan, uh, one of the guidelines in the established area or established central area is to sp support expansion of existing uses to adjacent areas. The design guidelines state that ingress and egress locations to non-residential uses should not access residential streets unless such accent access will not negatively impact residential areas. So while North Lorraine Avenue is traditionally a residential street, it has commercial and medical on both sides of that block. Chautauqua is a residential street, but with the use of being an office building, vehicular traffic will likely be accessing the site during normal business hours and will not have significant det detrimental impacts on neighboring properties. In addition, the protective overlay will mitigate possible light pollution caused by vehicular traffic. Um, it's not in conformance with the Wichita Places for People plan. Uh, the plan aims to focus the greatest intensity of new development along the main corridors of Central and Hillside and at the hospital campus. The subject site is one block north of Central Avenue and encroaches upon a residential neighborhood. The building types identified at this site between North Lorraine and North Chautauqua, it should be mid-rise or apartment complexes. The requested zone change is not in conformance with the Central Northeast Area Plan update. The plan addresses the number of housing demolitions in the area. Uh, this is also from um, the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, so it's talking about some of those physical indicator indicators from that time. Based upon the information available prior to the public hearings, planning staff recommends that the request be approved subject to the protective overlay that's listed in your report. The recommendation is based on the golden rules that are listed in your report. And I'll just go forward to the last uh, golden rule, the opposition or support of neighborhood residents. Uh, at the time the staff report was prepared, staff received one phone call from a gentleman who inquired more about the development application, but was not necessarily in support or in opposition to the requested zone change. So I'll go through the photos here. So this is one of the site plans that they came up with. Um, I, I don't think it's in this one specifically, but it's from November of 2021. I did reach out to the architect. He said it, they've been working on some revisions, none that are ready to submit, but that is something that they're proposing. Uh, this is looking east towards the site. Um, like I mentioned, there are 14 properties. There's seven on Lorraine and seven on Chautauqua. So see, these are some of the um, houses that are currently on site. And this is the uh, current medical office building on Lorraine and another medical office building. And uh, this is looking towards Central Avenue. And uh, here's uh, looking away from the site. 
And with that, I will stand for questions. Commissioner Aldrich. You know, just for clarification, uh, on the site plan that you're that we were given and also on the aerial on page seven, uh, is the applicant looking at uh, demolishing all 14 of those structures that are there now? I believe that is their intention. Okay, I guess we'll just wait until the applicant gets here. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Green. Yeah, I realize that the site plan may or may not be uh, accurate, uh, but if, if that is the way they decide to lay it out, uh, would the same requirements be necessary for so a site plan isn't necessarily required for a zone change. They were nice enough to provide that for us. Um, but when it comes to issuing building permits, they will have to ad adhere to the setback and compatibility height standards. Right. Um, but if, if, if that was the way that they were to lay it out, uh, would the requirements still be there for uh, screening uh, on both the west and the north yes. sides? If, even if the building backs up to the street? Um, I don't think we have a provision that uh, that the building can be in lieu of a screening, um, if that's what you're implying. Well, yeah, because the, the reason for that would be to uh, block the trespass of headlights. And if there are no, the only headlights that would be there would be from the driveways if the building were to be on the west side of that property line. I think the I'm reason, just, just, right. I think the reason for the north and west property lines to have some form of screening is because that is a residential area. Residential and employment mix the cross-hashed areas of our comprehensive plan. Um, doesn't that indicate that there would be additional employment in the area because of whatever is added? Is that the general purpose of that aspect of the plan? And what I'm getting to is there are a lot of parking spaces which don't generate employment revenue for the number of houses we're lit and a smaller building footprint. Can you speak to that residential mix? That is there an intent that it would bring additional employment to the area? Yeah, I believe Director can, Radel can speak on that. Can you help, Scott? Sure. I can, I can offer a little bit of background about how this, this map was actually developed for the comprehensive plan is that um, Stephen Banks at the time and, and other staff had come up with estimates about how many new jobs would be created and how many new residences or, or how the population would increase. And then it was a matter of allocating those throughout the entire region. And so I believe that this one was selected because of uh, activity, development activity leading up to it and also recognition that the Wesley Hospital Campus is one of the largest employers in the region. And so an assumption that there would be employment that would grow nearby. In terms of what the categories themselves mean for land use, I think it's a recognition that there would likely be non-residential land use that would take place. Um, it does, it says employment, but I think it's largely, you know, considering things that aren't uh, residential in nature. So there are really just two categories that we use, residential and then employment-based. But it could be commercial. We we see employment-based also used up in the res industrial areas as well. So it's, it, it, it's a higher level kind of analysis. It doesn't provide the real in-depth. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. Any other questions for staff at this point? If not, then we'll ask the applicant or agent, please, to come forward. Um, State your name and address, please, and you have 10 minutes. Good afternoon. My name is Austin Kinzel, On Point Development. Um, I'm an agent of the landowner, and I appreciate having the opportunity to visit with you all today. Um, this project we've been evaluating for about the last year and we've done a substantial amount of due diligence work with our development partners, uh, McCowan Gordon Construction, SPT Architecture. Um, we've had multiple discussions with uh, Wesley Medical Center, uh, residents in the area. And so we have a very good understanding from our perspective what kind of impact this project could 
could bring to this community. There's two buckets that I'll put that in. Um, one of those buckets is that um, over time there has been um, a trend for specialists to move out into the suburbs. And this project in particular uh, has re-energized interest in specialists coming back uh, to, to the Wesley area. Um, and, and one of the biggest reasons for that is um, there is, there's virtually no medical office, true medical office building space left. It's 100% occupied in the area. And probably furthermore, this is an opportunity that opens up investment opportunities for these physicians. They're not just coming to this building to become a tenant. They're coming to this building with the idea that they can rent a space that they can also have ownership in, which does a couple of things. It brings those specialists back to this area. And that is a good thing um, because there is heavy transit, public transportation that allows access to this particular facility. So that's, that's one of the buckets. Um, two, this is also an area that has historic, that, well, that the community has spoken that this is considered an opportunity zone. So there's an ask for private development into these, in, into these areas that are defined. And we are working diligently to, to do that. Second bucket that I would like to discuss is that um, this is also as much about bringing specialists back down to this high density medical corridor. It's also going to give the owner of these properties an opportunity to renew his interest and investment in this area. The homes are getting older, as you saw from the pictures. They're continuing to date, they're costing more money, and there's only so much that he can gain in rent from these areas. So this is an opportunity for the current landowner to reinvest back into this area. And so I think that's an important consideration um, as well. But again, we've done a tremendous amount of due diligence. There's a tremendous, tremendous amount of interest from providers in this area in particular in having opportunities to not only be tenants near Wesley, but also to be ownership in this facility. So um, I'll, speaking to staff comments, um, we are in complete agreement with the protective overlay. Um, the site plan that you saw is an older plan um, and we are looking forward to working with the, the city through our permitting process to make sure that we're in complete compliance with zoning and recommendations for overlay. Uh, but I would like to rest my thoughts at this moment and uh, stand for any questions. Commissioner Aldrich. Uh, yes, I got a couple of questions. One, the, uh, the layout that we're seeing right now in your site plan uh, are you planning on demolishing those residential buildings there now? The 14 yeah, homes 14, that yes. are there, yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Uh, and is your site plan going to be revised, or is this going to be what you have right now is what it's going to be? The plans that you see were provided to us by SPT Architecture, and it was more of an, a preliminary site assessment to see what was the maximum about a building capacity that we could put onto this lot and still have enough parking. Okay, and my last question, as far as the residents that are there, are those all rentals or are they privately owners? They're all rentals. And they're all gonna be displaced? Um, they are all month to month tenants. And um, we have plans in place to provide the tenants of those facilities plenty of opportunity notice. Um, these are, Preliminary stages, we're not, we're, we still have a lot of work to do here, um, but the tenants will be very well taken care of. In fact, the owner has um, discussed offering to relocate some of the tenants from those homes into other homes that he owns. Okay, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but when would you be looking at starting the project? Um, we're not anticipating um, construction start until probably we're in about a six to eight month 
out stretch because it's we need to make sure that we've got the right tenant mix in this building because it, it will involve specialists that that utilize the hospital to to perform procedures and i i guess it's uh would probably be appropriate to note that um that the development company that i work for works uh exclusively in the healthcare markets in kansas and throughout the midwest so we do have substantial experience with healthcare facilities. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Duell. Just so I understand, is the applicant the current landowner? Correct. Uh, Christopher uh, Simons, ESP Realty LLC, is the holding company for these properties. And I th I'm thinking of the hillside, uh, you know, arterial, and I can think of a number of properties that are on the hillside arterial that could definitely use some investment, reinvestment, but also aren't removing 14 homes. Um, how many parcels in that area have, you said there's nothing available at all that would fit a, how many parcels did you evaluate along in that area? I'm just curious. We're very familiar with that area um, and the, the spaces that would qualify for medical office building, but not just medical, but other general office use. Um, this would be a true medical office facility, um, and it would be for specialists. And so the need. other stuff down, if you're referencing properties that are available along south, um, most of what is available now has been picked up and has been utilized. And there's a lot of, there, there are opportunities that have been there historically. The economics of building the types of facilities that are needed, it's, for us, we see that it's, it's a better opportunity to be able to space plan and be efficient for the providers that we're looking to bring into these facilities. Okay, that sort of answered my question. Uh, other questions for the speaker? Thank you. If you'll stay tight, we'll now call for public input. Um, is there anyone in chambers who's ready to speak on this item? If you come to the podium, please. Yes, if you're going to speak and move closer, that's awesome. Thank you. We lose some commissioners at 4 o'clock, so okay. uh, proceed. Name and address and three minutes. Thank right. you. Uh, my name is Josh Siebenaller. I live at 3336 Country Club Place. I'm about four blocks away from this rezone. Um, I am the acting president of the McDonald Neighborhood Association, as well as a member of the District 1 Advisory Board. Um, I canvassed the block last night and spoke to the residents there. And I'll say about the applicant's community engagement, that the people that I spoke to did not know about this meeting. They were generally aware of the rezone request, but didn't know about any of this. And so I will be sharing some testimony from some of them that I spoke to. The residents of 522, 530, and 544 Lorraine wanted me to pass along that they've lived there for 12 years now, and they can't really afford to move. Um, their kids have grown up there, and that they are, they love working with Chris, they did, as far as landlords go, a very kind man, and has worked with them in the past, but they are just devastated that they can lose their home for this facility. Um, on to my remarks, um, I recognize that according to numerous city planning documents that the neighborhoods at the intersection of Central and Hillside need to change. We're a regional hub because of our proximity to Wesley, and that puts an inordinate responsibility on our community, including my own, for the overall development of Wichita. Now, as noted by the city staff, uh, this proposed rezoning goes against a number of guidelines that the commission must consider, including those set forth by the Places for People Plan and the Northeast Central Area Update. Page 109 of the Places for People Plan, a walkable development book, identifies these exact lots um, as transitory between residences and co the commercial artery of Central. Designating this block as a medical office takes away from any pretense that there should be a gradual transition between large-scale medical and commercial use and residential neighborhoods. Um, I said earlier that I sit on the District 1 Advisory Board. I've been there for a couple months now, and over and over I hear that Wichita, like many other cities, is in a housing crisis. We're perpetually short of affordable places to live for the people who are currently here and those who want to live here. 
in the few months that I've been on this board, I've only heard one rezoning case for new builds, and that's duplexes up by Heights High School that the applicant estimated would sell for $300,000, which is well above the price tag that folks in this city can afford where a median income is $64,000. These are not empty, decrepit buildings on this block. They are people's homes. And the applicant is asking for you to confirm that he would lose economic opportunity if this rezone is denied, and I reject that claim. He is fully within his right to seek profit, but destroying these homes is the easy way out. If he wants to reduce his investment property portfolio, it sounds as though he owns multiple throughout the city, then explore selling these homes to, thank you for the time, explore selling them to the current residents and let them keep this community. And I would, uh, as my time wraps up, encourage this commission as a fellow appointed official to think about our responsibility to this community as y'all weigh your vote. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions for the applicant or, or for the speaker? I'm sorry. Um, did you have a question, Commissioner Williams Bay? Okay. Uh, of the people you spoke to, it sounds like they weren't aware of a, of a meeting that was held. Um, did you speak to anyone who was offered support for moving? Okay. No. All right. Thank um, you. I'll also add that a lot of the folks that are on this property do not have leases. They are they just they do not have legal recourse or protections. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Is the next speaker on this subject, please? Daniel Anderson, 3733 Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I live on the other side of Wesley Hospital from this location. Uh, a couple of other points I wanted to uh, look at. Can you bring up a street view map again? And what I wanted to point out was that all the streets accessing this proposed building are residential size streets. You're increasing the traffic on those and there's already an emergency uh, uh, Sedgwick County Emer uh, EMS is on one of those corners. So you're looking at some major traffic cons concerns. Uh, again, there are 14 houses we're learning 14 houses we're losing, that's been discussed. Some of them look a little tough, uh, but they've got, appear, uh, appear to all have uh, be occupied and attempted to be maintained. Uh, there's a discussion of a need for medical uh, offices. I note that farther West on uh, Central, there has been a refurbished shopping center that is now totally medical offices that's been up for lease for about four months that is still up for lease. Uh, a quick scan of the bu uh, medical buildings in the area indicates they may be underutilized at this time and there is additional space around Wesley that uh, can be used for development. I would suggest that a better use for our, our location for our specialists may be downtown next to the new medical university, the medical health uh, uh, foundation and uh, other support areas down there. You also have the uh, traffic uh, structure that goes from Wesley to downtown. Questions. Any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you for your testimony. And the next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Trish Heilman. I live at 139 South Fountain, um, which is in College Hill, which is the neighborhood caddy corner to this neighborhood. I'm also speaking on um, behalf of WIN, Wichita Independent Neighborhoods Association, or neighborhoods, and, um, and just wanted to talk about a couple things. We get, as city uh, residents, that if you have residential property, it is gonna be more valuable if you can turn it into commercial property. Um, yeah, okay. This is a huge chunk of residential, a huge bite. 
and it's a real push into this neighborhood. We, we support the plans for Places for People plan that asks us to stay on those arterials, on the hillside, on the central. And there is, I'm not in his business, he's done his research. I would suggest we should be asking by not approving grabbing residential land like this, communicating to the developers that yes, we actually insist you find that land on those arterials so that we can use that transportation infrastructure, which is great, but we also keep those residences. I saw those houses and I thought they were sort of cutie patooties. Um, and, and they are decently maintained and they are housing people that um, probably would struggle with buying, moving. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention for our win, if we were to accidentally act actually notify residents, not just landowners. We might have gotten better community input because everything around, from what I'm understanding, is um, rented. So we don't get the engagement with the community that we might better be representative of what that community wants because we're not notifying renters at all in our process. Um, thank you so much for hearing us and for making these hard decisions. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you. Any other speakers in chambers? Please proceed to the podium. Hello, my name is Carla Phillips, and I live at 545 North Lorraine, which puts me right there in the middle of this block that would be what we're talking about. And um, I understand that wheels are turning financially. There have been meetings. I, I had to kind of find out about this maybe six months ago through um, Nancy, the owner of the Green Elephant, saying something to my son who was walking by her store. And I texted the owner, my landlord, about it. And he has, he has never been able to give me any firm information about when this is happening, if it's really happening. And he has also, he has offered to help us move, but I really don't want to move. Um, I'm retired. I was, I had to retire early because I am terminally ill and I don't really want to move. I rent the house that has a small apartment at the back. So we're not just talking about 14 families, we're talking about 15 families because my son lives in the apartment and he helps me because I need a lot of help. And moving is going to be a, a tremendous hardship for us. It's going to be a hardship for many of the families because yes, we don't have leases, but that is not because we chose not to have leases. That's because we're rather poor and we we are working, most of us, if we're not retired, and we're doing the best we can, and we're living with maybe some things being substandard because we understand that Chris has, I believe, 85 houses, and he can't get out and take care of everything. My house needs paint. There's, there's a few things it needs. But we let, it, we, we let it go because we understand that for the price that I'm getting, I'm, I'm doing the best I can. And... I just hope that you guys can consider the hardships of displacing all these people, which by my count would include nine children. There will also be children across the street on Chautauqua behind us to the west that will be affected. I know of a family of five, and you probably saw in one of those pictures their basketball goal, which they placed right there on Chautauqua. And they played basketball in the street in the evenings, right up until the time it gets dusk. And this is because there's not hardly any traffic coming. They can do that. These are brick streets. There's places where bricks are starting to come up from the little bit of traffic that we get. You, it's your going to time become worse. Is approaching the end. Is there any additional? Uh, I believe topic? there are other places. Search of care down the street is empty, as far as I know. Okay. The police went there and had some kind of a training in, in February, and I haven't seen any activity since then. Okay. And your, your time is now up, so Thank I'll call you. for any questions from the commissioners. 
Okay, thank you very much for your testimony. Any other speakers in chambers on this topic? Are there any speakers virtually on this topic? And any speakers who would like to participate who are attending virtually? Thank you. Um, applicant, you have two minutes to rebut, uh, respond to the concerns that you've heard expressed. I would like to thank everyone who spoke, and I appreciate um, where you're coming from. I do, and I, I heard each one of you loud and clearly. Um, but I want to I wanted resolve some maybe misconceptions that there was not notification. I personally walked the neighborhoods, knocked the doors. I did have multiple conversations with people in the immediate area off of Lorraine and Chautauqua. And it wasn't all peaches and creams feedback. Um, there are some challenges in, in that area. Um, and, uh, but I don't want to, I don't, that's not really why, why I'm here today. If we look here on this map by, you can't see it. And I don't know that we have a, I don't know that we really have a, you can use the mouse. But, uh, Yes, that allows us to hear you, especially those commissioners participating virtually. Everything to Please, we can't hear you oh, when you're not at okay. the microphone. Thank you. I apologize. You. I apologize. So this is all limited commercial, everything forward or south of where we're proposing. Uh, limited commercial. The rest of this from here on and over into Wesley is all the same color zoning that we're looking for, which is green geo. So this actually ties in this entire hard corner intersection into a health care campus type scenario. Um, and it, it, we have, I am aware of- uh, 15 seconds remaining, just- The morning. properties you all have referenced, they're not true medical facilities and there's a reason there hasn't been a tremendous amount of interest from specialists in those areas. But um, that's where I'll um, leave it. Thank you all very much for the time today and we appreciate your consideration. We thank, thank you. you for your input questions for the applicant at this point. Thank you. This brings it back to the commission. Discussion. To me, this is a appropriate uh, zone change. We've got commercial and office all around it. It's next to the hospital. It just makes sense to me to rezone it to office. Commissioner Aldrich. Yeah, my, my hearts go out to the residents that are there. Uh, but the bottom line is uh, property ownership. And I think that this is also appropriate, uh, you know, for the zone change that is requested. And I would hope that the, the applicants would do everything in their power to help assist uh, the displacement of the residents that are there now. Um, but I'd like to make a motion for approval based on staff recommendations and comments. Second. I have a motion for approval from Commissioner Alders, a second for C Commissioner Green. I can't support this because of the loss of residential housing. My comment would be um, in displacement situations because of the desperation of the persons being given short notice for moving or even if it's some significant notice, uh, the cash immediate cash payment is also often considered that's going to get them to the next stage, but there are not enough affordable units for people to go to. So I'd ask that the owner please carefully consider that we're getting these folks to a place they can't afford and the money they need to make that transition because moving is extremely expensive uh, and difficult and worse the lower your income. So I just add that comment and I won't be able to support this just in my heart. Um, but any other comments before we move to uh, maybe a roll call vote on this one? I just want to, I, I don't want to ditto what you, what you said, uh, Commissioner Fox. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned about not only losing the houses, but I, I happen to own a 
uh, business close to Wesley Medical Center. I happen to know that there's a lot of property around in that area. There's one specific medical facility that they've been trying to sell for months and months and months and months. It's sitting there deteriorating, and I just can't see displacing um, 15 families from their homes in the environment that we're in with people struggling to find housing as it is. I at one time had a healthcare contractor license for commercial and absolutely know that the infrastructure in the buildings, the demand for electricity, et cetera, makes many buildings very, very difficult to rebuild, but also the infrastructure to support the traffic to and from is uh, much more appropriate, not in the middle of the residential area. So can understand why some properties are more expensive, but if we displace people appropriately, that's going to be expensive too. Commissioner Johnson. I guess I want to say that I feel sorry for the people that's going to have to move. Uh, that's an emotional side of it. it this commission cannot rely on that kind of information. We got to look at what's in front of us as far as zoning. It fits in. So I'm going to support it, even though I do feel for them. And I have that emotional thing, but I also see the infrastructure to support people into the neighborhoods further also gives me great pause. Uh, pardon? Can we, roll, roll call vote, please. Yes, ma'am. So this is to motions to approve uh, per the staff recommendation in the staff report. Fox? No. Dual? Yes. McKay? Yes. Green? Aye. Bill Johnson? Yes. Josh Blick is absent. Nix is absent. Foster? No. Warren? Yes. Joe Johnson? Yes. Miles? No. Hartman? Yes. Aldrich? Yes. Williams Bay? No. Motion passes eight to four. Thank you for all who provided testimony. Next, uh, have an agent for 4.7. 4 .8. Point 0.8, I'm sorry. For, uh, for because we were waiting for the agent, so I've just asked, is the agent available at this time? Uh, I believe that there's a Mr. Khan Who's available? Con, if you're online, can you speak up, please? Sub Han, Khan, are you available? Are you online? Can you please raise your hand or speak up? Madam Chair, I'm sorry. They don't. We don't seem to be getting any response. Momita, we're going to continue to try to check in. Uh, maybe if they show up, then we'll be advised accordingly. Uh, next case. Um, four ten. Uh, Christina, for the presentation, please. This is zoning case twenty twenty three. Uh, 0034 at 741 North Clara. This is case, uh, this is case number zone 2023 0034. The applicant is requesting a zone change from SF5 single family residential district to MF18 multifamily residential district with protective overlay number 413 now submitted by the applicant. This is a 0.63 acre property at 741 North Clara Street. The subject site is currently developed with an unoccupied single family dwelling and a detached garage, both of which were built in 1941. The applicant is requesting the zone change in order to allow multiple duplexes on site. So I'm gonna skip ahead to the site plan here. Unless, here we go. So uh, they are uh, requesting the zone change to allow multiple duplexes. So we have five duplexes, so a total of 10 dwelling units on the property. Um, when you take the protective overlay into account um, and uh, there will be no changes in the setback standards or height restrictions. 
Uh, the preliminary site plan also shows 12 parking spaces in the middle and the unified zoning code requires one parking space per dwelling unit for duplexes. So uh, it satisfies a parking requirement and they also comply with the front and rear setback requirements. Because the applicant is proposing multifamily zoning in a single family residential zoning district, they will need to adhere to the requirements of the Wichita Landscape Ordinance, as well as the Wichita Sign Code, which prohibits building signs from facing residential zoning districts if it is within 150 feet of the residential lot line. Properties to the north, south, east, and west are all zoned SF5 single family residential. So um, there are some TF3 zone, there is some TF3 zoning in the area, as you can tell by this zoning map here. Um, but it's not within the immediate vicinity. The requested zone change is in conformance with the Community Investments Plan. The uh, 2035 Wichita Future Growth concept map identifies the site as a primarily appropriate for residential. If we look at the design guidelines from the Community Investments Plan, um, multifamily developments can be appropriate in existing residential uses if appropriate site design limits adverse impacts on surrounding residential uses and the design of the buildings is compatible with the existing residences and the scale of the development is compatible with the intensity of the surrounding area. So when you take the protective overlay, its provisions, and as well as the provisions of the Wichita Landscape Ordinance, um, which include uh, building height restrictions, landscape buffering, um, they are all designed to provide a site design that limits the adverse impacts on surrounding residential uses. The requested zone change is in conformance with the Wichita Places for People plan because a subject site, uh, de uh, it is in what the plan defines as an area of opportunity. Based upon the information available prior to the public hearings, planning staff recommends that the request be approved subject to protective overlay number 413. So I'll just go over it really quickly. Um, structures shall be limited to duplexes and single family dwellings. Utilities shall be installed underground. Amendments, adjustments, or interpretations to this protective overlay shall be done in accordance with the Unified Zoning Code. The transfer or title of any of all portion of land included within the protective overlay does not con constitute a termination of the plan. The development of the property shall proceed in accordance with the development plan as recommended for approval by the Planning Commission and governing body. Any changes to this development shall be submitted to the Planning Commission and Governing Body for their consideration. And the building height shall be limited to 35 feet. This recommendation is based on the golden rules, which are listed in your staff report. And to reiterate from the staff report, um, we have not received any comments from the public on the requested zone change. With that, I'll go through the site photos. So this is looking west towards the, towards the current structure. This is looking north away from the site. This is looking east away from the site. This is looking south away from the site. And with that, I will stand for questions. Questions for staff? Commissioner Aldrich? Yeah, this is the old, uh, or not the old, it's the Orchard Park area. Uh, and there's a few streets around there that are still not paved. Uh, is that Elm Street that's just south of the site? Is that is that currently paved? I can't remember. I, no, I, no. it's not? No. Uh, with, I guess my question is, with the additional traffic and everything else is, and it may not have anything bearing to do on whether this is appropriate or not, but I'm concerned about the paving there is all. Yeah, it was paved when I came on, because uh, Clara goes right off of Central, and so that, all of that was paved up until I took the site photos. Well, I knew, I knew uh, Clara is, but I was referring to the surrounding streets, side street yeah. there. Other questions for staff? I'm sorry, did I cut you off, Commissioner Aldrich? Did that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions for staff? If not, we'll ask the agent or applicant to come forward, please, to present information about your plan. You have 10 minutes. We lose a commissioner at one. Well, okay, go forward. Good afternoon, uh, Michael Edwards with KE Miller Engineering, uh, agent for the applicant. Um, really looking, uh, Christina summed it up pretty well um, with the staff report. i take any questions if you have anything on the site. Any questions for the applicant? Commissioner Warren? 
I'm a little concerned about parking. I'm looking at five buildings, 10 units, and you got, uh, what is it, 12 parking stalls? If they, if, they, if they overflow the 12 parking stalls, where's the next alternative for parking? From my understanding, this was, this was a rough site plan that was put together um, by the developer. Um, we're working on that and we're willing to accommodate any extra parking. Um, I would like to add that um, the, the existing structure that's there, um, there is talks on uh, leaving that and not actually, and having that as being one of the structures which would remain a single family um, development and wouldn't be a duplex. So um, that would take down the dwellings maybe to nine, I believe, is because they're requesting 10 right now. That would take it to nine. So um, I know that that was a rough site plan. Um, additional parking, there is space for additional parking too. Okay, any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, uh, we would take test uh, speakers from the chambers who'd like to speak on this item and again hang out for your response go ahead proceed to the podium and your name and address please and you have three minutes david blessman 749 north clara yeah this is not a good deal it's a single family area you got five duplexes he's going to leave one that's 10 parking spots everybody knows you have two to three cars per family there's gonna be an issue with parking. Not only that, there's gonna be trash. Just look at the drive-by two and a half blocks to the west of me and look at the duplex, the, the disaster that's over there. It's not a good deal. I'm all about development, doing everything. I'm in business myself, but no, not two houses for me. That's about all I can say. Thank you for your testimony. Any questions for the applicant? Speaker? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the, and I don't, it doesn't matter who answers it, but it, is there one property on this? Is there one house on this property or two? There's one house in the large, dude, large, uh, there's a large, there's a, a house and then a large two, two car garage. Okay. So the house, the garage is much newer than the house. the house. So based on uh, me talking to the previous owners of it, the, the guy that owned it, we were trying to buy it ourselves. It was, he was under the impression that the guy that bought it was going to turn it and flip it into, you know, fix it up, leave it a single family dwelling. Two months later, now the, the all projects stopped. Somebody sold some. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Just to me, it looks like a lot of backdoor stuff. Commissioner Williams Bay, you have a question for the speaker or uh, for a general the question for the applicant? And can we hold it until we've had the rest of the speakers, and then he can answer and rebuttal? Uh, next speaker, please. Any other speakers on this item? Anyone participating virtually who would like to speak on this item? Hearing none, we return then for rebuttal and we'll let Commissioner Williams Bay ask his question as well. Uh, yeah, um, with the concern on parking, um, I, I know that it meets the uh, guidelines with the protective overlay uh, for the number of stalls based on the dwelling units uh, that we're requesting. Okay, Commissioner Williams Bay, you had a question as well. I want to make sure I understand. You said you were going to uh, keep the residential unit and demolish the, the garage? Uh, I, I understand that there is, it's, um, it's up in the air. There is talks on leaving the, res, the, the residential uh, dwelling that's there right now, and the garage would be demolished, yes. As as Any other comments you want to make in response to the um, testimony given by the speaker? Not currently. Okay, thank you. Bring it back to the commission. Did you want to speak on this item as well? Another speaker? Oh, no, it's too late. I'm sorry. We had the chance and we lost it. Um, bring you back to the commission then. Uh, what? What's your... Move to approve per staff comments. You have a motion to approve from Commissioner Foster. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Commissioner Warren. Any further discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. 
Any opposed, nay? A motion passes 11 0. Can you check my math? Okay, thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Um, he's on. Okay, we have an agent on. We'll need to return to um, item four point. If I, if I could, I'll try. Mr. Khan, are you there? Y yes, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Malmita Kundu will give the staff report. Yes, and I believe this is your first time presenting as a new staff man member of the planning department. Yes, is that is. accurate? Welcome, Malmita. Thank you for the opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Momita Kundu for the planning staff. Uh, I'm going to present zoning 2023-00031. The applicant is requesting a zone change from general office GO to NR, neighborhood retail. The site is located at 200 South Hillside. The subject site is developed with a former medical office building and associated parking. The applicant intends to use the site for uses permitted in the NR district. The uses permitted in the NR district that are not permitted in the current general office district are library, personal care service, which is permitted in the geo district by conditional use approval, Personal improvement service permitted in the geo district by conditional use approval again. Printing and copying limited, which is also permitted in the geo district by conditional use approval. Restaurant subject to supplementary use regulations in section 3D6C. Retail general. Sign rights do not change as sign code permits the same level of signage in the NR district as the GO district. Required screening per zoning code is in place along the east side of the property line. The site has been used commercially before the adoption of the landscape ordinance and it is not required to come into a compliance with the zone change. The properties to the north, west, and south are zoned general office and developed with medical offices or other office uses. The property to the northwest is zoned limited commercial and developed with a church. Properties to the east are zoned SF5 single family residential and developed with single family dwellings. In 2013, an administrative adjustment was approved in per to permit an LED sign for an office in Geo District. The request is in conformance with the Community Investment Plan, which identifies the site appropriate for new residential uses which identifies that some commercial use may likely be developed in this area based on the market-driven factors. This site is along an arterial where commercial uses are more appropriate. The request is in conformance with Wichita Places for People Plan Strategy 6 to encourage infill and redevelopment that is contextual to the environment in which it is occurring. Based on the information available prior to this public hearing, the staff recommends approval of this application. The staff received a couple of public comments with curiosity about the zone change and intended use. The intended use is unknown. Neither of the comments were in opposition. The case will be heard at the DAB 1 in, the, in July. And now let's go through the site photos one by one. So this is looking northeast at the site and you can see the current, the existing medical office building there. Looking southeast away from the site. This is northeast away from the site. This is west away from the site. Looking south along the rear of the site. And this is southeast along the rear of the site. 
And with this, I stand for questions. Any questions for staff at this time? If not, then we would um, call for the applicant to tell us about the project. So can you give us your name and address, please? And you have up to 10 minutes to explain your project. Uh, yes, ma'am. My, my name is Subhan Khan, and the address is 200 South Hillside, uh, 67214, I believe. We, um, the, the property is zoned, uh, like, she, like she mentioned, um, for office and partial retail. What our plans with the property are, I spoke to some of the neighbors too, they personally reached out to me and um, it, it, it was very productive and the comments that I heard from the neighbors and uh, some of the, the retail there to the doctor's office and uh, some of the neighbors. Uh, where the intentions are we're moving, um, we are still gonna be using 80% of the property for uh, general offices like we are, we will move our corporate office uh, to the north side on English, and um, and on the east side uh, we're putting um, another architect offices that we have uh, a firm that we own. Uh, we're putting a design studio in it, um, which at the which at the time I'm not sure if it comes under the current zoning or not. But we we were planning to put a design studio. Um, it's an interior kitchen designing um, uh, firm that we we have, and then we, we're leave, we're left with about four thousand square feet. The whole building is about eight thousand. So the four thousand square feet we were left with, uh, we're trying to do it as a retail. It could be a coffee shop. It could be a little hair salon, um, little grocery store, um, some some sort of a little uh, private retail section is what we wanted to do with the. Uh, with the remaining of the property, the the w w when I spoke to some of the neighbors, their main concern was they didn't want a, for example, a gas station, or they didn't want a big um, a retail store where they or, where they will have problems with parking. In the past, they mentioned that um, when when it used to be the office building, they had no room. Uh, uh, one of the neighbors mentioned that she couldn't even park in her own driveway because there was so many parking park on the English Street and um, in the alley and everywhere. And uh, we, we did told them that we are not putting any big retail store or furniture store, or, you know, anything of that sort. So we're very basic plans, um, nothing, nothing major. I think that that's all I have. Any questions for the applicant at this time? Thank you. And now call for public input. Is there anyone in chambers who'd like to speak on this item? Step right up. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jack Patton. I live at 337 South Rutan. I'm president of the College Hill Neighborhood Association. And we've been looking at this building being empty for years and we're kind of kind of excited about somebody coming in and actually doing something without tearing down any houses or anything like that. So um, as far as the, the neighborhood's concerned, uh, a little retail shop there, a little coffee shop, uh, fits in with the neighborhood. There's a lot of parking there already. Uh, the only caveat we have is, you know, new owners, they might want to do some more lighting. You know, as long as it's not shining in the back, you know, my backyard and through my bathroom window, uh, you know, we're pretty good with it. So, uh, let's go. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. And thank you for taking time <laughs> thank, out of your day to you. give positive feedback. That's different than your you usual. Know. Next speaker, please. Thank you. Yeah, Eric Lundgren, <clears throat> 3305 East English Street. I'm just a half a block. I got a little half page here. I think I can get this all in. Uh, with all due respect to the subject property, uh, my main concern is the traffic on English. Uh, we already have had a major increase in large truck traffic on English because of all the hubbub on the Belmont and the, all the new restaurants up at Clifton. Uh, these food service trucks can't get down Oakland or Holyoke. You, you can see on the map how tiny the little streets are in this neighborhood. Uh, and they're talking semis. The Benny E. Keith 18-wheeler semi comes cr cruising down English towards Hillside every day at a high rate of speed. And I realize that a, personally is probably a 
probably a problem with the driver, but anyway, it's, you know, these are Pepsi trucks and they're all on a tight time schedule, I understand that. So my big concern is the traffic on English Street. If this could be designed or repurposed with the truck traffic staying on Hillside and not on English, you know, then it might be okay. But my main concern is the traffic on English because uh, we already have four to six trash trucks going by every week when really we should only have one or two like in other cities that have uh, contract trash service. So, uh, you know, I think repurposing the building, you know, with a new facade, maybe even a second floor, it could be very, uh, a good property. As the previous guy said, you know, there is a demand for quality office space in this city and this building is outdated and repurposed. It could be done, done well. It's just the traffic on English. Thank okay. you. Thank you for your testimony. Any questions for the speaker? Next speaker, please. Thank you. Tanya Robinson, and I own the home at 225 South Holyoke, which is directly behind this building. Um, we, we don't mind having uh, office space and everything. The problem we have is uh, the business before had the LED sign. It went straight into our windows. Uh, I have tenants. Uh, it is a rental property. And you know, it goes directly into their bedrooms and into the kitchen, and it's late at night. What we're concerned about is having more of that signage and whether or not it's going to impact uh, noise level-wise also because we are backed up right to that building. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Anyone else in chambers who wants to speak on this item? Is there anyone participating virtually who wants to speak on this item? Can we see any activity that I am not able to see? Okay, all right, thank you. Then we'd ask the applicant to, re to uh, again speak up. To You have two minutes to respond to the complaints you've heard. Uh, yes, ma'am. The uh, in, in, in regards to the LED sign, uh, we are not opposed to, uh, we don't have to put an LED sign, uh, which in the long run will save us money if the city won't approve us to put an LED sign. Uh, because if there's tenants and then, you know, there's LED sign, it's more uh, cost for us. Uh, there will be no LED sign if the neighbor is, are not happy with it. And then on, on, on the other gentleman, on, on regards to the traffic on English Street, uh, I don't think if this project will have any uh, impact on the traffic on the English Street, um, then they already have there, because we are not going to be using the English Street for um, any of our clients or any of our traffic, except me and my brother, which we will uh, have our personal offices uh, on the English side. And the way we have is I provided some of the plans to a few of the neighbors that reached out to me and I provided them with the, with the plans. Um, we will have no traffic on English Street except uh, maybe two cars getting into the building from the English Street, which will be coming in directly to our offices, not uh, customers or any uh, guest parkings. The, the way we have it is our cars, personal cars, not even gonna be on the street. It will go inside the building where we will work so I, I don't see any any issue with the with the traffic on english okay thank you commissioner hartman you have a question yeah one of the people mentioned the uh, lighting around there shining into their their homes or whatever are you as far as the existing lighting there for the parking is that going to change or be about what it is now uh, we, we don't have electrical there, so to be very uh, honest, I don't know where the light was uh, um, impacting who or in which direction, but uh, we have done some projects in um, around the town, and we're building the restaurant on Central, the It's Cali, uh, which is a huge uh, parking. They have a huge parking, and we put the lights there with the city approval, which doesn't impact um, affect any of the neighbors or... Um, any of the uh, commercial buildings around us. So we will probably do the same, um, the same plan there, which, which it shouldn't affect um, anybody in any way. Okay, okay, thank you. Any additional questions for the applicant? Okay, Commissioner one more Hurt? question. In the staff report, it mentioned that the, uh, 
the property was zoned prior to the landscape uh, ordinance. Uh, but it seems like landscaping along that east side might be appropriate. Would you be opposed to that? On the east side, it, there, there is an alley. I don't see any. Um, I don't see any uh, landscaping on the east side. It's just an open alley. Okay, any other questions? Thank you for joining us. Um, I would then bring this back to the commission. Commissioner Warren. A question for staff. The traffic situation isn't anything that really affects this property. When we hear things like this, how do we get a hold of the appropriate folks to take a look at safety issues? If there's a street that has people that are driving way too fast or driving unsafe vehicles. Do we have a way of notifying somebody in the city that handles that department? Yeah, excellent question. Um, that would be traffic engineering. And so what they can do as far as truck traffic is they can designate a, a road to not to prohibit uh, trucks of a certain size, vehicles of a certain size from using that street. They can also look into the number of crashes that have occurred and, and determine whether or not there's a traffic issue, a safety issue, or also lay down uh, the hoses and traffic counters to determine if there's a speeding issue along that street. So is that something we can request or do the neighborhoods need to do that? What we can do is um, taking it upon this conversation, we can take the minutes from this case and I'll ask the planner for the case to make sure we get a snippet from the minutes and send that to traffic engineering so they're aware of the testimony that's been provided. Thank you. Thank you. Is anyone prepared to I move for approval subject to staff comments? Second. Motion from Commissioner Hartman and second from Commissioner Miles. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Hearing none, motion passes 11 0. Uh, item 410, uh, Christina is the presenter, or did. Did we done 410 North Clare? We are. I don't want to do it again. Um, we do have a non-public hearing item. Uh, welcome, Susan Erlenwein, who will present us with the Cedric County Solid Waste Management fi Plan five-year update. The purpose of this presentation is to uh, fulfill the KDHE requirement that a commission review the plan to ensure it's in compliance with our in conformance with our um, comprehensive plan. That's correct. So we'll be looking at the end of this for a vote to approve the plan and its conformance. This is a very lengthy and detailed report. Who knew there was so much to know about waste management, but we did have the documentation ahead to review, and we'll appreciate the highlights of the plan changes, Susan. Question. You're asking sure. for an approval now? Approval that this, uh, our purpose is to approve that the plan is in conformance and that we have, res and we're required to review the plan. But if we just re got it, how can we approve something? We received it by email about a week ago. Commissioner or a director Wadel. I'm trying to promote everybody today. No, to to that point, when we put it on the agenda, we did not receive the materials in time to s distribute them as part of the physical packet. So I would look to Susan and talk more about the schedule for this and what the timeline's looking like. Because if there is an opportunity, maybe uh, you could ask for additional time to review it and see it at another meeting. Can you give us an overview about your time deadlines to get this uh, to meet KDH requirements, please? They like it by the end of June, but um, they've always extended if needed. The presentation I'll give will show you all the highlights of the plan update. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. All right, go. Let's proceed. Uh, Kansas Department of Health and Environment requires that every county have a solid waste plan. We've had one in place since the late 90s. Uh, it, they have an 
require that we have an annual review, but every five years they also require a more updated five-year review, and that's what we're looking at now. So they only require this comprehensive plan approval every five years. Okay. Uh, KDHE just wants us to look at changes that we have in the plan, uh, updated demographic information from the Census Bureau, the list of solid waste members, who's collecting the trash, any data, and any plans for the future. So that's what I'm going to cover with you. As you already know, there are 20 incorporated cities in Sedgwick County. Uh, we have the uh, population data there. There are 12 businesses licensed to collect trash in Sedgwick County. Uh, of those two only collect special waste cleanups like junk boys. Uh, 10 are residential companies that come along for curbside residential trash collection. Of those, one went out of business uh, in 2022, but another new one popped up in 2023. So we're still at 10 trash haulers. Of the uh, 20 counties in Sedgwick, I mean cities in Sedgwick County, 15 of those have a contract of some sort for trash collection. 14 of those have a contract for one trash hauler for the entire city. Wichita contracts with all trash haulers. All of those cities, including Wichita, requires the trash hauler to provide volume-based trash rates, which means different size carts for different prices for the trash, curbside recycling, uh, is also required. The five cities that do not have a contract you see on the list here, of those five, Hayesville is in the process of going out for bid and requiring one company for the entire city. Recently, when I presented this to the county commissioners, this paragraph was added to the solid waste plan. County leaders support local communities' efforts to reduce the costs and increase services for solid waste collection. Cedric County recognizes that cities should make their own decisions in regard to waste disposal. Cedric County does recognize the advantage of waste hauler contracts that will reduce road wear and tear, reduce air emissions, reduce disposal costs, and increase services such as curbside recycling, volume-based trash rates, and bulky waste collections. So that was just added last month by the county commissioners. To look at how much trash we produce, a municipal solid waste is the polite term they used in, in the solid waste industry. Uh, in 2022, we produced just under 387,000 tons of trash from Sedgwick County. That's a 4.2 decrease from 2021. The Solid Waste Committee has uh, said we should continue to have the transfer station for our disposal option. They also reconfirmed commitment to sometime in the future having a local county-owned landfill and explore new waste technologies such as incineration. The Solid Waste Management Committee also strongly recommends a south transfer station. I don't know if you're aware, but there was a tra south transfer station owned by Waste Disposal Inc. at 55th and uh, Hoover. Um, and the couple decided to retire, and that does facility was sold to Waste Connections. Waste Connections owns the North Transfer Station up at 37th Street and West Street. They have yet to open the South Transfer Station, and we constantly hear complaints by the South Townships and by residents down there who like to self-haul on the distance they have to go. Looking at waste over the 15-year trend, you can see in 2007, we had over 464,000 tons of solid waste created. In 2022, just under 386,000. So we've been reducing the amount of trash produced in our community. Recycling is part of that in helping to reduce trash. Uh, in 2022, we had 67,000 tons recycled, which was a 34.7 increase from the previous year. And looking at the chart, you see it's reverse of what we just saw for trash, an increase of the amount of material recycled in our community. Solid Waste Management Committee recommends that the county works with these recycling facilities to determine 
the type of contaminants they receive and educate the public on proper recycling. Unfortunately, some materials are added to recycling that contaminates the, all of the material and that reduces the amount recycled and increases what's thrown away. So we have agreed to work on that and I'll be working with the recycling facilities and get the message out on what to do. Besides curbside recycling, there are two drop-off recycling facilities, International Paper and Pro Kansas Recycling. And information about recycling is on our Sedgwick County Environmental Resources website where people can get more information on where to take materials. There are two composting facilities in the county. One is Evergreen Recycling up on 53rd Street North, just west of Broadway. And uh, Brooks Construction and Demolition Landfill has a composting site. So they received over 13,000 tons of material. Plus some cities have their own uh, composting areas for their residents to take material and later pick up mulch. We have a household hazardous waste facility owned by the county. It's at 801 Stillwell. Uh, in 2022, we had just under 13,900 participants and collected over 1,275,000 pounds of material. Household hazardous waste is the chemicals you have under your sink, cleaners, it could be paints, fertilizers, pesticides, strippers, any of those materials that you really shouldn't be throwing away in your trash, residents can bring to our facility for free. Also, we work with businesses that produce a small amount of hazardous material, uh, and they can bring it at our cost for disposal. 209 businesses were worked with last year who brought in under 40,000 pounds of materials. We also have a swap and shop where people can come in and pick up material for free. So as we get hazardous chemicals, we look at it and make sure that you can read the labels, that the material inside is in good condition, and we put those out on the shelf for residents to come in and take home. By doing that, we saved money by not having to pay a contractor to take it away. Almost $73,000 was saved last year from our budget. Plus, the material is reused. Uh, we also provide five remote collection events every year, so we take it out to the community to better serve them. Last year, uh, the five remotes, we had over 1,300 uh, vehicles bringing in almost 200,000 pounds of HHW, household hazardous waste. Our next event, by the way, is this Saturday at Beechcraft, and those events are only for four hours from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., and believe it or not, sometimes we've collected 300,000 pounds in a four-hour period. Looking at the trend of household hazardous waste for the past 20 years, you can see it's constantly increasing. And you'll notice a spike here uh, in 2020. That's the pandemic. People were staying home. They were cleaning out and bringing the material to our facility. The swap and shop is the green line at the bottom. We had to close the facility for a period of time and limit how many people could come in. So that dipped, but look at how, that was almost 1,800,000 pounds in one year because of the pandemic. Now, if you get rid of that spike, you can see we're pretty much in line back in 2022. It's customers then, but look at the customer drop. The same thing, the blue line dropping, and the people brought in a lot of stuff in each load. Here are just two pictures of some of the stuff we were seeing coming in per load. They really cleaned out, which also affects recent years because they don't have this junk anymore. Uh, c and D stands for construction, construction and demolition material, two by fours, roofing, carpet, shingles. There's uh, Two C&D facilities, Brooks Landfill is now construction and demolition, uh, just north of K96 off of West Street. And south of that area is a private C&D landfill, CDR North. They collected uh, just under 188,000 tons, which was a 14% increase from 2021. Oops, start using that button. 
C and D material over time fluctuates depending on the economy and how much building is going on and how much materials taken to these facilities. Bulky waste are items too big to put in your trash cart. Chairs, couches, tables, uh, appliances. That's also what causes a lot of roadside illegal dumping. And uh, we have a bulky waste coupon that's available for residents to sign up online, a thousand pounds to take loads to the transfer station. They're not billed, the bill comes to my department. So from 2012 when we started this to 2022, almost 70,000 coupons were issued. So we're really pleased as this promotional way to get rid of uh, stuff that could have been dumped illegally. However, you know that people have the capability to transport it because they transported it out to a county road and dumped it. Uh, storm debris, we work with that. Uh, we worked on the Andover tornado. We had our household hazardous waste department go door to door collecting material that they needed to get rid of. We helped in providing dumpsters for people that my department paid for to help clean up on the debris. So the uh, last storm debris management plan was created in 2017, and that's still applicable now till they do an update. As part of this, my department uh, added a tub grinder and air curtain burner in 2015 that was approved by the county commissioners. Instead of having a tree debris go and dump it on the ground and have an open burn, which causes a lot of smoke. The air curtain burner has an uh, area where you have a trench. You burn it, you're blowing air down into it, and you have hardly any air emissions. The odd part is, for me to run that, I have to have a permit from the state that costs $1,000 a year for the permit. But if I did an open burn, no permit, no cost. So doing the right thing comes with the cost, but it is worth it for the health of the community. Storm debris also, we have that tub grinder you see at the bottom. Both of these are portable. We've taken the tub grinder out to many cities, even uh, up to Brooks Landfill for their use. And the branches are picked up. We mulch the material. You can see that coming out the right side. And we leave the mulch material for the residents in the area to pick up. We've done it with Valley Center recently, we've been to Goddard, Der Derby, other areas to help them clean up debris. Christmas trees, the, which we've been recycling those for uh, a long time, oh, 21 years, and we have 22 sites across the county. Ten of those are in Wichita, others are in other cities. Uh, we uh, provide the areas, we provide a grinder, and we leave the mulch for the citizens to pick up. So over 106,000 trees since 2002 have been mulched. We also have a program for uh, illegal dumping. I've worked with uh, the sheriff and judges to increase the fines in the county. We provide free signs for the townships to put up. And we also pay for the disposal of the illegal dumping. So when a township picks up the material, they're providing the labor where my department pays for the disposal of the Ill illegally dumped material. So over 2,244,000 pounds since 2002 of illegally dumped material, 126,000 of those were last year. We also have special cleanup programs. I work with Metropolitan Area Building and Rainier, Construction sorry, Department. Got a question for you? Sure. On the illegal, uh, do we catch anybody doing that? And is there an enforcement and fines and what? It's very rare to catch anybody. We have worked with putting up some cameras to one low and one high to try to catch them. It's very difficult, but if we have had some people. If it's furniture digging the court. Dig in the cushions, and you can usually find some identifying information. DNA testing would be good. Um, yeah. Is the coupon program cheaper than the special cleanup program? In other words, communication of the coupons, the, would that help? The coupons help, but remember, that's up to 1,000 pounds. Okay. Whereas the okay. cleanups, like this one that I'm looking at, is where MABCD is about to find somebody because they need to clean up their property and they have a lot of junk there. 
and the people are willing, but they don't have the funds yeah. to do okay. it. Thank so you. we provide the dumpsters. Okay. That, that explains that. Thank you. Okay. And then the people get neighbors and friends and all and help do it. The bottom pictures are before on the left and uh, clean up on the right. We also work with aging department on some hoarding cases. So we try to help out where we can. So uh, since we started this in 2017, we've provided dumpsters to 697 properties. And sometimes that's multiple dumpsters pick up and take back. And vouchers are where it's not that much material and the people have a pickup truck or trailer and can do it. And we give them vouchers to get in for free. And again, I get the bill. We also have waste tire collection events. We had one just this past April where we had uh, over 137 tires from over 2,000 vehicles. And you can see we've had eight events, the total over 1,300,000 tires brought in. And the importance of getting tires out of the community, one, they're an eyesore along the road, they're a road hazard, they collect water, mosquito breeding grounds. Uh, so we're trying to clean up the area. We're also, I think in the past few years, being taken advantage of by businesses saving tires for the event. And so we've been limiting this past event, 50 tires per vehicle. But one thing I'll point out, these are what they call waste tire equivalents. So a tractor tire may be worth five or six passenger tires. And we do electronic waste collection events. We'll be doing the next one next spring. We've been kind of alternating tires one year, electronics the next. We uh, have collected over 2,470,000 pounds of electronics through these events. The very first one, we had over a million events, a million pounds in one day. I'll never do another one day event. And that's because of that. Uh, so the recent events have been uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then the following Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So six days, giving people plenty of chance to bring in TVs, stereos, cell phones, any electronics like that. Uh, the company we get, by the way, is out of Wisconsin. They're a zero waste per company. Everything's recycled. Nothing goes overseas. So we're very pleased with how we've been working with them. Also, we have to show in the plan that medical waste is taken care of. Stericycle works with veterinarians, dentists, office, doctors, offices, hospitals to properly take medical waste. They have this transfer station here that then takes it to uh, an incinerator in the northeast part of the state. There's also, we work with the drug drop-off locations. Uh, to have locations at the Cedric County Zoo and also HHW facility. But we also provide med safes at some of the police stations in the small cities. No questions asked. You can see it looks like a mailbox. You just drop it. And some of the drug uh, companies, uh, Walgreens, all have uh, returns as well. And for public education, we have the website at sedgwickcounty.org. The recycling guide, you can click on what type of material you're looking for and who, where to take it in town, and uh, it has information. Solid Waste Committee, again, recommends that we do education on proper recycling and also that their waste haulers are supposed to provide volume-based rates and um, you know curbside recycling, even in Wichita. And I hate to say this, but... I had an uh, owner of one of the companies say, yeah, but this contract with the city didn't say we had to tell our customers. So we'll be telling the customers and getting the message out there. And the state requires that any permits can, that the state has to have for solid waste must be in a approved by the Solid Waste Committee and the commissioners that is compliance with the Solid Waste Plan. So in the past five years, we've had Stericycle, which moved a location for their uh, transfer station for medical waste. Evergreen Recycle uh, had a permit to try to receive construction of demolition material at their compost facility. I don't think that's ever gone through yet on the state level. And Waste Connections permit to be a tire collector because tires come into that facility and they need to transport them out to the appropriate location. 
I don't know if you know it, but there's a law that in Kansas, you cannot bury a whole tire in a landfill. They bounce back up to the surface. So they'd have to be cut or better yet, recycled. They also require the grants to come through this uh, solid waste committee. And there's just a list of uh, Central County Park applied for uh, using waste tires at the Boundless Playground there, Nudge Compost for grants for they do food waste recycling and evergreen recycling uh, up on 53rd to increase education and material. Solid waste fee by the commissioners last month was kept the same. Uh, for residential, it's $8.38 a year, and it's on the property tax. Non-residential is from $5.33 to $10.67 per year. So it's not a lot of money, and it goes to pay for all of these programs I just mentioned. So thank you. That's the end. Uh, try to make it quick. I know it's been a long afternoon for everybody, but I'll be happy to answer any questions and ask for your approval that is... This plan is in uh, compliance with the comprehensive plan. Commissioner Aldrich. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a pretty good deal, just skimming through it and stuff, and definitely support, you know, uh, doing all we can to help keep things nice and clean in our, in our metropolitan area. One of the things I'd like to see is some enforcement about having loads covered. Uh, you know, there's all the time I see vehicles going down Meridian, making the turn to get over there on 96. Lows aren't covered. They got half their limbs left on the highways where people, trailers break down and they just leave the trailer and everything right there because it's overloaded. But they ought to have some sort of a mechanism or something, whether it's through the flock cameras or whatever. But when you pull up to a landfill, I like to see that something happened that if the load is not covered, that there's an extra charge or extra fee or a fine. Uh, and again, based on cameras, uh, you know, where uh, those fines or those fees don't go to the uh, landfill uh, operators, but would come back for enforcement, uh, you know, to the city or the county or something. But yeah, you know, I, I totally agree with you. And um, as far as them traveling down the road with an uncovered load, that's the law enforcement. But uh, I've tried talking in the past to the receiving facilities. I'll do it again and work with our legal department on what pressure can we put on them to charge differently for covered or uncovered loads. Un and I may say secured or unsecured because some of them may not totally need a cover, but I've been scared traveling behind some vehicles that something's going to fly off. I, I know exactly what you're talking well, about. Especially along 53rd Street and stuff, you see a lot of, uh, you know, the uh, dredging operations and everything else going on out there. And most of those lo loads going on 235 aren't covered. And now you've got dirt and sand and everything else that's, making little these little imprints all over your windshield sure. and stuff. So, yeah, I know it's a, you know, an enforcement deal. We don't have the law enforcement, you know, personnel to be out there taking care of all that stuff. There's going to be some way that we can impact it a little bit different where we're helping clean up some of those those issues because I mean, it's one thing to to have a uh, a policy when it, when it comes to our landfill and waste management and everything else. But what good does it do when it's laying all over the interstate system? I make a motion that we find the report in compliance with the comprehensive plan. I have a motion from Joe Johnson. Second. Second from Foster. And uh, all in favor, please indicate by I've, saying I've aye. Got, I've got a comment. Uh, you have a comment first? Yes. Commissioner Jean I, Green. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that you are quite adept at being a trash talker. I was not, I was not expecting that. Out of hey, I've been called the trash queen before. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was worth the moment that it took. Thank you for that comment. I would ditto. Um, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Three. 
and Joe. And okay, ten zero. Thank you all for bearing with this, and I'm sorry I get emotional about housing. I hope I presented enough facts to support my emotion. Absolutely. But Anne? Yes, I'm still on the mic. Yeah, if we're going to have economic development, we got to support the areas of business 